Okay. Morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee and Art in the Morning. I'm Dee Dee. <laughs> and you're weird. I like you. <laughs> anyway, I thought we would work in some color books. Not just a color, not just color booking um, the pages, but to for the purpose of cutting them out. This was the last one that I remember. I have still have a couple other girls to finish that from the um, look color book from this one. <clears throat> so I made a couple copies of that book, and this is one of them that I'm going to want to cut her out and use her in an art journal page. And that's what I thought I would do today. I would use the Inspired Coloring Nature for the purpose of cutting this out. Now, I've, I've done other pages in this book and not to cut out, just to have, just to color them. Like these two are two separate pages. We added our own little stylized emu here, added some collage and paint and, and made my own, turned this into my own kind of tree but these weren't made for cutting out neither was this double page spread so this has got collage watch parts she's collaged in and uh, of course the background is all painted and so this was i didn't do that one to cut out either but there's other images in here like those flowers like these this and see like i probably won't color him i like this little owl not so gr crazy about this little duck so this page and this page of flowers would be good for coloring and cutting out and putting <laughs> it makes you smile Gigi. would be good for coloring and putting in the art journal same thing that's why i like this book that just add fairy landing see i've got all kinds of things cut out and partially used We've used different bits of, uh, of these in the art journal. And so, yeah, but let me do get a page here. Um, you always want to use a piece of cardstock behind something that you're going to color. Even if you're, you know, and if, if you're going to cut it out, of course, I could just tear it out. And uh, it, I think these pages are perforated, too. Just cut it out and do it on the desk. But my desk is kind of crunchy with paint scraps and everything. So I just as soon color it in the book, then tear it out and cut it out. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'll color these four flowers. Now, I'm not going to try to color them like they're, they're real natural, they're realistic colors. I'm going to color them probably like neon colors and things like that. Because I'm going to put them in my art journal and I'm going to want them really bright. Um, in this case, just to be have something different, and I don't necessarily know that I will leave these light, these green. I think I'll just probably cut the leaves right off. I'm not even going to use those. So, for instance, this is a dogwood, so it's probably like white with maybe a little pink or yellow in there. I'm going to probably just color it another nice bright color. Uh, I think maybe we'll use we'll try something different, like maybe. I don't know if I want to use neo colors as a base. Something, you know, maybe we'll do a couple with acrylic paint, neo color, something different. Just uh, or even the ink tints. I haven't used the ink tints for uh, in the color book, so maybe we could do that. You can use your watercolor pencils. Your, you know, even your cheap kids. Let me grab mine over here. You know the your cheap kids watercolor set this kind you know this kind of thing you can use this kind of thing as a base and uh, I might use a little bit of each one just to just to play around with each one so um, yes I have a cameo the, I'll tell you the number one tip is to put it on put your paper on the cutting mat <laughs> So anyway, I, I don't know what the problem was with using a double-sided paper, though, Gina. The top layer of the paper tears away from the back. Oh, it's, it's almost like it's a pressed paper, Gina. Like you're saying that it's a double-sided, like one of those papers that's been pressed, a cardstock that's been pressed. Yeah, and it's peeling apart. I've never used one of those, probably for that reason. Um... And most of the time, I use white paper because then I can color it any color I want. But <clears throat> yeah.
Yeah, but I see what she's saying, Val. I think she's saying that when she peels the paper off the, the cutting mat, it's tearing the paper apart. And, and that's because of that particular paper. Yeah, it's that paper, Gina. It's like a pressed paper. It's like two pieces of paper pressed glued together. So when you're pulling it apart, you're peeling off. The best thing to do is I wouldn't use that paper, but you know, if that's what you want to use, then just I'd, I'd take your, you know, tool and just be real careful scraping up from the very bottom layer, you know, and working it all the way. Don't pull it, in other words. Don't pull the paper. Do the, you know, scrape it up. Yeah, separating the layers of paper. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Don't peel. Don't try to peel it up. Try to scrape it up so the paper doesn't peel apart. If that's if if I read your few comments correctly, so my solution is if something's not working, <laughs> try something else. That's just me. You know, that paper ain't working on. I'm not uh, going to, you know, get all, I'll just find another paper. But that's just me. I'm just saying, don't email me. I'm not saying Gina would email me. <laughs> and I may have, you know, that's just, if that's what I read from the comments, Gina, I might have missed something. <clears throat> yeah, I just use a little metal palette knife. You can get specific tools, you know, and it's basically, essentially, the same thing, just a metal scraping tool, you know, to scrape away. Um, uh, Jess was the one that told me, just use your palette knife. You don't need to buy a special tool. It comes on the machine already torn up. Okay, yeah, I think that, that it might be that paper. It's because those are pressed. It's, it's, it would be like trying to cut two sheets of paper at the same time. You know, know what I mean, Vern? I would just try a different paper. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're going to do, Lindsay. We're going to color these. All right, so let's go ahead and try a few different, do, do it, like maybe these four will do different ones. Like maybe we'll do, now I don't want to, it's not going to matter if it comes through there as long as it doesn't go on the other sheet. Okay, so we'll try some different things. Uh, Neo colors, ink tints, maybe we'll do the kids watercolor, and then maybe we'll just do one with um, acrylic paint. So we'll do the washes, and then we'll go over each one with color pencil. How about that? Does that sound good? All right, so let's, and again, I'm not going to color them their true botanical colors. Like, I, like that's a dogwood. I might color it, you know, hot pink or, you know, purple. I don't know. I'm not, in other words, I'm coloring them specifically to go in my art journal, not to make them a botanical painting. So, all right, so let's just start with this one. We'll start first, we, you know, we always do a lot of acrylic, so, but we'll start with acrylic. You know what? I've been curious about how color pencil will go over the dilutions. Let's go with that, okay? So now again, I don't want it full strength. I want it to I want it to be watered down because I want to see the lines. If you can't see the lines, you, you might it's just going to be a solid. See, I almost knocked that over. I got to be careful. <laughs> Those little pots, they're cute as a button, cute as a button, but you don't want to knock them over. All right, let me see. Let me get a sort of medium sized brush here. Oh, this one's probably good. All right, let's go with this. If y'all have any questions, put them in caps. And if you're watching this recording on YouTube, it's a live show or on Ustream, the uh, link to my Ustream is in the description box. So feel free to come over. I usually stream every Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern. And then at least usually once a week during the week. This week I knew I'd be up at Denise's, my daughter's house. And then uh, hupster has been out of town, so it's been kind of, haven't been able to do one during the week. But here is Friday morning, so I thought I'd do a little bit of color book work this morning. And for the purpose, if you're just joining me, I'm going to color these, just whatever color strikes me. And they're going to be, I'm going to cut them out and use them in my art journal. So... So thanks everybody for being here. If I've missed saying good morning to you, Jeannie, 
Janice. I think I said hi to most people. <clears throat> Hello, Maple Llama. <laughs> and Pat Van. Anybody else I might have missed? Sharipa. I said hi to Julie. I know her last name's not Topaz. Thanks for the in the guests that are here. <coughs> so I think I said hi to everybody else before I hit record. So all right. So what I want to I'm gonna do is I want to see I haven't tested out the, the, the dilutions. This is what the the dilutions paint. I've got five colors. I want to go get the purple. Um and I've got the turquoise, the lime green, post box, post box red, the yellow, and the pink, the hot pink. So I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to put some out here because I don't want to put water in here, right? And then I'll just get my brush wet and just kind of make it into a wash just like I would any other acrylic paint. But, uh, and then just paint this. And I, what I want to do is, is test it to see... <clears throat> how color pencil goes over this the reason that i didn't uh, initially buy these paints well you know i said oh i've got all those colors in other brand you know in my uh, americana so i didn't well you know what here's another thing i don't need to worry about i'm not going out of lines because i'm going to cut this out so i'm just cut paint right over the edges um <clears throat> as for some reason i got it in my head that they were kind of shiny that they were satiny or had a sheen a gloss to them and usually your color pencils aren't going to go well over the top of a shiny paint. So I just said, well, yeah, I'm not going to get those. I, I can't use them with my color pencil. But they're not shiny. So I bought some when I, I had a coupon for a total, you know, purchase a sale. And, and um, so I got a few of, I got five of them to test out. And I think there's ten colors, not maybe in plus black and white. And so I want to, now I'm going to just do these washes on them, and then I'll see what it looks like when I go over with color pencil. Jean takes shower because she doesn't <laughs> Well, I thought Jean had to, I thought Jean was going out of town today. Carrie? Huh, okay. For some reason, I thought she was going to go visit, but maybe that's not till later. All right, so now I'm going to take the yellow. And again, you got to be careful with these babies. I already bumped one the other day. So now I'm going to clean my brush out, and I'm going to pick up some of the yellow. And I don't need too much, but I'm just taking out the lid there. And then add just a little bit of water to make it a wash. And I'll do the center of that flower. There we go. That's all there is to that. Okay. That's it. That's all I put out, and I even got a little bit more that I probably could scrape into my desk journals. Okay, so there's those. We'll try that. I'm just going to let it sit there. I'll hit, I'll hit everything with the heat gun before I start coloring. But I just want to, oh, so what I wanted to do, this is the dilutions. Now, oh, oh, I've got to make sure. Yeah. I don't want to go through to the other page. Dilutions, paint, wash. Okay. <clears throat> now let's try with just the kids' watercolors. All right. If y'all have any questions, put them in caps. Yes, this is turquoise. I'll tell you the colors I have. This is called Vibrant Turquoise. This one is Bubblegum Pink. And I know the colors are not going to look true on camera. This one's Postbox Red, which to me looks very orange. This looks way oranger than red to me. But I did not see an orange there, so yeah, I mean it just looks so orange. But anyway, uh, fresh lime and lemon, lemon zest. Okay, and I want to get the dark purple. They have a dark blue, they have a dark green, black, white, and I think maybe an orange. But anyway. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's see what color do I want to use. Let's use some hot pinks here on this one. So just get some uh, spray here and just spray these down for a second. Maybe I'll add a little bit of the bright red too. So I'm just going to use those colors. I'm just going to put some water in that for, I'll just let it set for a second while I'm thinking about the other two. So then I'll also use, on one of these I'll use a neo color 
And then on the other one, I'll do some ink tints. Yeah, it looks orange on camera. Yeah, well, it is orange. It, it, it really, the post box red looks, looks orange to me, too. Even when I bought it, I thought it was orange. But I'll look, I'll look at them again when I go back. Maybe this is just a batch that looks more orange. I don't know. I like it, but it, is, it looks a little orange. Okay. All right, so now I think that's set there for a second. So let me just take this hot pink color. And I'll just put a base of that. It's kind of like the, it's like a neon. And now remember, these are just the kids. Again, I'll just go right all over the lines because I'm going to cut these all out. All right. And this paper is a, a little, it's thicker than printer paper. So you have to think of that too when you slap a lot of water on these. Okay. <laughs> of course, I'm going to, I don't really care if they wrinkle some because I'm going to cut them out and glue them down. Right. I'm going to glue them down on uh, the art journal. So it's really not bothering me if they wrinkle anyway. But just be aware of how thin your paper is. All right. And then I think I'll take the, the darker magenta color for the center. There we go. Like that. Okay. All right. So this one is the kids watercolor. All right, so let's move that one over to the side for now. And now let's go to the Neo Colors. All right, Neo Color 2. Mom, Mom bought some of these after she saw mine. And uh, I think she just bought a set of 36 or something like that. And uh, I said, make sure you get the Neo Color 2 water soluble. The Neo Color 1s are just waxy crayons. So if you want to blend them with your um, water, so I'll show you that this is what this set looks like. To me, this set could still, or well, any set could use more, but it really needs a couple more blues and a couple more reds. There's almost not a good true red in here. I mean, this one is it's as good as post box red, but um, like a deep red without going into purple. So it could use another blue and a red. So next time I think about it, or next time I put in an order at Blick, I'll have to uh, get a couple more. So, all right. Hey, hey, Cass, Sandy, behave, Sandy. <laughs> You're the good girl. <laughs> we like to tease our Sandy, S Sandy in UK. Okay, so Dilutions Paint Wash. Okay, the kids' watercolor. Now I'm going to go over here, and I just got to decide what color. Let's go with a nice, bright um, something. Do I want orange? Maybe an orange. Let's go with a nice, because I'm trying to have it show up, too, right? Now, with the, oh, and I don't want this brush. I want a water brush. I use my water brush on the Neo Colors. Now, there's two ways you can do your Neo Colors. You can color right on something. Now, again, I'm being kind of messy because I'm going right off the page. But, you know, this will give it a real, um, a lot of pigment on the page. Or, let me just go ahead and put that on and just kind of scrub it in. This is probably plenty for the whole thing. Or you can pull some off like this. Just pull some off and add it to it, right? So I'm just going to do that as well toward the edges. And again, I'm going right off the image because I'm going to cut these out. They're going to go in the art journal. I don't know if that will get to the art journal today. <laughs> we'll see. I might find place. I might find homes for them. I might find homes for each of these, but I don't know that it will actually do a journal page. We'll see how much time. Again, I'm just waiting for Hubster to fly in, so which won't be till later this afternoon. But you know, I we'll have to get some other stuff done too. So we'll see. We'll see. All right. So there we go. So I left it light along the edges, kind of darker on the inside, and that is what um, that's with the dark orange. Okay. to look through a directory um i saw that but it's really not it's really not a directory i mean it's some but it's not what i would consider all the color book artists so i don't know i mean i saw that though yeah you can put a link if you want carrier um channel open links if they're not already 
Uh, but I did see that. I, I don't know that I would order it. I've got so many. I mean, guys, I probably have. I need to I count them again. Last count, I had like 50 color books. I don't know that I need any more. I'll never use all these, right? <clears throat> all right, I'm going to squeeze out some excess. I'm going to clean my brush off here. So I'm just going to squeeze off some excess and uh, get the pigment off the tip there. Um, let me use up a little bit of that yellow from the dilutions just to put in the center there. Just to have something in the center. All right, so this one was the Neo 2. Thanks. Thanks. Feel free to put the link in there. <clears throat> All right. So there's that. And I'm not going to go far with these. I'm just going to set them to the side because I'm going to color more than these four flowers. But I thought this would be a start. All right. So for the last one, we're going to use ink tints. Ink tints, it's by Derwent, and they are ink pencils. Now, the, the only thing about them, it's, it is a little tough. It is a little tough to see the colors on the tips on the ends don't match exactly with the color. I mean, they're close, but it's not the exact color. So I did have these swatched out. I don't have my swatch right next to me right now. So I'll just do a little test on the cardstock and see. All right, I think I'm going to go with a nice bright green. Let's do some uh, a green. This is turquoise. Let's go with a couple of let's just try the this one and that one's too light just like kind of like a grass green because i want these vibrant and bright uh for the purpose of going in the art journal now remember if you use these in your art journal all right the watercolor ones the neo color and the watercolor will reconstitute in other words if you glue them down don't go over them with a matte medium that's going to smear it uh, now, I will be shading over it pretty well with color pencil, but just remember what you're using because they'll, they'll move. The Dilutions paint is it's acrylic, so I'm thinking it's not going to go anywhere. And the ink tint, supposedly when it's completely melted, completely sa un, you know saturated and dry, I just don't trust anything like that's water soluble like that, you know? You know what I mean, Vern? Hey, Sandy with a P. Good to see you. <clears throat> okay, so again, it's kind of the same way with the Neo Color. You know, you can do it both ways. Let me get my water, get a water brush here. You can do it both ways. You can color, you know, a lot of, again, I'm not trying to do them botanically correct. I'm trying to color them that's going to be used nice bright colors in my art journal right so you can put it directly on the um for more saturation and then move it around okay or you can do if you want to do little details you can do the same thing pick it off the tip and color like that so either way right and ink tints is supposed to be permanent once you fully get it dissolved and it's dry, okay? Now I'm just going to go ahead and put some quick, just to make it quicker, color in all the leaves. And again, I was going to do that. What the? <laughs> uh, I'm not worried about going off the edges because they're going to be cut out. All right. So I'm just dissolving all the ink tints. And it's, they're, they're vibrant colors. They're really pretty colors. So I hope that, that shows up. Let me clean off my brush. All right, so this is ink tints. All right, so I am going to dry it all with the, because you want everything perfectly dry before you start coming in with color pencils. All right, let me set these aside. Set the neon colors aside. Get everything off here because I have to have room for my color pencils. So let me hit this with the heat gun real quick. Hopefully we're focused in here still.
And sometimes if you just want to color the back side, you got, got that real wet and it came through. So I, it doesn't matter because I'm going to cut it out. But to get some of the wrinkles out, if you dry it on the back, it helps with the wrinkling. But be aware, if you're in a color book, that you're not going to cut things out. I just slopped on the water here, knowing I was going to cut it out. But, you know, you don't want to put a lot of water on your color book pages without testing how, how the thickness of the paper is going to uh, work, right? Like in the back or something. Acrylic ink sprays at Walmart. Oh, fun, Galena. Fun. Yes, I actually did see a set of, I think it was at 12 or 24, I forget. Maybe it was 12. Uh, Prisma Colors at Walmart. So, uh, there was just a 110. That was all that they, they just that one size. I think it was 12. I don't remember. I didn't get it because I have all those colors. But anyway. Alright, so now I want to get my color pencils here. And I have them in different trays and just, you know, depending on how much I'm using whatever color. I have a, a few trays here. This is the silverware tray. You know, it's like one of those plastic we put the silverware in. And I've got, these were colors I was using for a while. Then I have, um, I'll just show you a handful here. Loose, I have all my flesh tones just sitting right here on the desk. And then I have my big tray here of all the bundles of pencils and then there's just some pens here these are my barrel collectors these are <laughs> these are my favorite castell my polychromos some different brands there and then in here are my precious luminance that uh <laughs> there's my precious luminance ones from uh, from eileen the enabler elf they stay in their own little home as do my barrels from Paula and Galena. Uh, so anyway, all right, let me put those on. I use them, but not, I use them sparingly. I'm not going to use them on a color book page. Just saying. All right, so, <laughs> so I have all the, a lot of the colors right here. So let me just go ahead. I mean, enough, I have enough right here to use on a color book page. You don't need as many as you think. Unless you're doing portraits and really a lot of blending. You can get by with a, you know, a decent set of whatever kind of brand you want. Um, you know, 24, 36. If you're just using them in color book pages, you know, don't go crazy. Don't go crazy with colors that you, for your color book. If you're, especially if you're not going to really be into it that much, you want to test it out. Did you notice a big difference with the luminants? The luminants are... I can't speak to blending a portrait with them, Janet, because I don't have enough portrait colors. So I can't say about doing a face. They're very smooth and soft. I really want to try, I think I bought two of the uh, Pablos. So if I was going to probably get a full set of something, it would be those, the Pablos. And that's probably pretty much based on Cass Cathy's recommendation. So, but I love my, I just love, other than the breakage and the change of wood, when they moved, I guess when they moved to Mexico, they got different wood. I don't know. I'm, I've talked about it a thousand times. And, um, but let me just say this. If you're having problems sharpening your, your Prismacolors, it's not the sharpener. Don't email me. Okay. So let's go ahead and go over here to this. I want to get a nice dark. Let's see, that might be dark enough, yeah. So I'm going to go with, and again, this is a Dilutions paint, a wash. I've not tried to do color pencil over it. I'm just kind of feeling the difference with them. Um, the, this is the smoothest. So it's going to have the less tooth. I don't, I, maybe I should have put a little bit of just plain. Let me just put a little bit, just so I can have the feel. Uh, just a drop. Just gonna put a drop of my Americana out and just do a little bit over here just to do a little test and do a little bit of wash just to kind of like side by side feel. And see, I feel like Paula doing these demos now. 
If y'all want to see good comparisons of product, you go check out Journal Artista. Paula will do a, a an awesome comparison of everything. Just awesome. <clears throat> All right, so let me dry that real quick just to have that bit dry too. So I just want to feel the tube side by side. You know, feel the tooth of it. So the kids' watercolor is a little bit gritty, which is good for the going over it with the pencil. The neo color is less gritty than this. The ink tints really is a smooth. Well, let's see. It's almost comparable to the neo color as far as the feel of them both. The kids' watercolor has the most tooth, and the dilutions left none really. But that doesn't mean that the, it won't pick up the color pencil. You just don't feel it with your hands. You can feel it with, on the uh, just the acrylic paint. So hey, sassy pants, are you on your new on your new computer? Oh, you're on the iPad. Okay. All right. So I'm going to use this, a white and a black. I'm not going to go crazy with the colors because again, I'm just kind of playing around here, and I'm going to cut these out and put them in my journal, right? And let's see, I need a black. Let's see. I'm just going to do a few colors. <clears throat> Get me a sharpener right here. All right, so I'm going to start with, uh, let me go ahead and start with the black. And one of the things about a color book page that's cool is a lot of it's already shaded for you. So you don't have to try to guess where to shade. And if you really want those blacks that you've done a wash right over to really be vibrant you do want to go back over them now you don't have to necessarily get every little line okay that's going to be shaded with the darker blue but you if you want that some of that vibrant black back you want to at least get in each area and i don't know if you'll be able to tell the difference between like here and say here see how that's a little bit grayed out because i've gone over it with the wash so you want to go back in and, you know, get that dark black vibrant again. You've got your sassy pants on, okay? You're so cute, Jean. Jean, don't you go, aren't you going to go visit, uh, are you hopping on the bus today or is that tomorrow? I might have missed the days. And you don't have to do it all at once. I'm just kind of showing you a little bit of you know, here and there, but you can do a little section at a time, however you want to do it. But remember, like if I'm going in here with black where this yellow is, I'm going to want to be careful when I go in here with another shade of yellow, because otherwise I'll pick that black up. So you might want to do your lighter colors like that, you know, do some of the other colors first before you go in there with black. All right, so now I'm going to go in here with the dark, you know, this color, blue. And the other thing, too, is especially in my color books or when I do quicker drawings, animals, portraits, or whatever on my stream, I'm, I, I'm not as careful about, uh, I mean, I am careful, but it's not as much so, especially on a color book. I don't care so much about... pressure and not showing any waxy bits because it's to me it's just a color book it's not like I, I'm really worried about you know any of that so I'm just saying so if you get you know if you get a lot of waxy the, the problem with the waxy buildup isn't even so much the way it looks the problem with the waxy buildup is once you get it waxy buildup you can't blend they won't you, you can just all you can do is like here's a heavy coat right there right all right, I can go over it with black, but I'm not going to be able to do a couple of shades of blue and blend because they're so waxy buildup. So the purpose of not hard pressure, is, and again, I don't care that much in the color book. So I'll put a little harder pressure on a color book page because I don't care about blending 30 colors, right, on a color book page. But I'm just saying, if you do want to do a lot more blending, the, you don't want to get it too waxy build up because then you're, you're at the end of the blending, okay, with the Prismacolors. I can't speak for every single color pencil, all right, but they're just my favorite because they are soft. Jean's picking up. Oh, okay, Jean. All right. 
All right, so it, it, it just depends on what you're working on. If, if I'm doing like a, an animal portrait, I'm not just going to sit there and bear down like that with any color. But on a flower here that I'm going to cut out and glue in an art journal page and I just want to kind of do them quicker, I'll put a little more pressure, but I, I'm at the end of the blending, right? If, if you know what I mean, Burn. That's, I can't be blending a whole bunch of, of colors once I've waxed it up, all right? So I'm just going in here. Now all the areas that I've already got dark with the black or where it has lines to show you shading. And I'm not being overly, like I'm not getting in there and like, and you, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. You can get in there and take your time and, you know, shade and blend every single petal. And that is good for practice. I mean, color books are awesome, awesome things to practice your shading, your blending, your color combinations. It's just like all awesome for that. Hey, Suzanne. But I don't spend, you know, I'm just being honest, I just don't spend as much time on a color book page as I do a drawing. But it just depends on what you're trying to achieve. All right. So there we go. So now I've got some of the black, which I did kind of pick up a little bit with the blue going over it and I just went I painted it right off you're just joining us I tried I'm trying to um, show different base different washes of things before I put the color pencil over and the color pencil goes over just fine over the dilutions wash as it does any acrylic this is just an acrylic paint here it feels the same I can't really you know it, it's a nice smooth blend so the reason, like I said earlier, the reason I kind of hesitated on buying these at first was because I thought they were satin. I don't know why I thought they were satin. Maybe it's because they're so shiny in the tub when you see them, you know, in the little pot. Um, I thought, well, that's got to have some gloss to it. There's no gloss. So it works just fine with colored pencils. Mary has Dee Dee's rain on. She was calling yesterday. She waited until... I missed something with Mary, Janet. Sorry, I missed something. <clears throat> All right, so now the areas that I have not put any color pencil on are going to be able to pick up the white really, really well. All right? Now, let me show you again over here on the little acrylic sample here. All right, so this is just plain acrylic paint, which is acting the same as the Dilutions acrylic paint. All right, so here is... I'm going to put, there's some uh, blue, right? Now, if I take my white, it's not going to go over that. Look, I mean, you can see it lightening it up, but it's not going to go back to vibrant white. But if I go right over here, look how white that is. This is one of the benefits of the acrylic wash. As long as there's areas, like all these light areas, there's no color pencil. That's just the wash. In those areas, I can do this. The areas that I've already put the dark blue on will look like this. You can lighten it up some, but it's not going to get this bright. No, see what I mean? I don't know, Carrie. I don't know why I thought they were shiny, you know, but okay. So now I can go in here and put highlights on the petals and they're vibrant white in those areas that don't have pencil. It just has the wash. So I can get in there and make sure I have some nice bright highlights. And then I'll go in and blend. See, I'm only using three colors. Then I can go in with the blue and blend, blend that some of that in. And some you might want to leave a nice bright highlight here and there. I'm kind of doing it fast because I want to get a lot of them done. I want to get a lot of coloring done for my art journal. Again, these are all going to be cut out and put in the this journal here where it's just got all different kinds of, you know, it's all different stages of clip art, collage, color book pages, paints, a little of everything, right? And I'm not going to flip through because I just did that last week. 
but these are going to be go in that book. But I don't have specific pages picked out for them. Right now, I'm just in, like, you know, if you were just doing this, you would just like can be enjoying the coloring process and then worry about where you want to use them later. I am going to cut them out and I will flip through the book and see if I find a home for any of them. Otherwise, I'll just keep them in the back of the journal ready for a colored book image ready to use at some point in the journal. So don't feel like you have to use it like right then. Just, you know, you know, you can save it, save some of them for later. And in the meantime, you can do some relaxing color book pages, knowing that they will have a purpose sometime. I get people saying, well, you know, why color all those color book pages? I'm never going to use them. I'm never going to see them again. They're just going to sit in a color book, which like my mom loves her Mary Inglebright. She will probably just love to color that Mary Inglebright book till it's completed, and then she'll have a completed Mary Inglebright color book. But, you know, if you've got 50 plus color books, you know you're never going to finish all your color books. At least I'm being realistic knowing I'm not going to. Um, okay, so M10 says, I have specific pages picked out for them right now. Just doing this, you would just like enjoying the coloring process and worrying about what you want to do with them later. Right. So you can do either one. I've done it where we've found a color, found an art journal page and I've colored a fairy or, you know, like that's, I also have this book here ready to color some other things if, if we run out of stuff to color. And, and I might have a specific page in mind for that image. But more times than not for me, because I like to do the random collage thing anyway, I'll just, you know, use these, I will cut these out and use them as I go through my art journal and find, um, then find a home for it. But one of the benefits of doing it that way is you can sit here and enjoy the coloring process, knowing you're going to have a place, a home for it eventually, but not feeling stressed out either or. You're not going to feel stressed out like, oh, I've got to find a place for this, or why am I even coloring it? Or the other thing, or the other side of it is, I'm going to color a whole book of images and I'm just going to sit in a book. So, you, you know, you can use your images for different things. All right, so now I'm going to take my blue here and just kind of start doing a little bit of blending around some of the highlighted areas. Then I can go back with the white and start kind of pulling in some of that blue. So you can start to blend out some. I want to leave some of the bright, bright white though. I, I don't want to lose all that. And this right here, this is already painted green. This I'm working in the Inspired Coloring Nature. Inspired Coloring Nature. And in this case, the pages have these splots of green on every page. Or some of the image is colored in green. Which, don't let that put you off from buying the book. You can paint over that or color over it. So, you don't have to worry about that. Like this right here, I could so just paint this whole, I mean, color this whole thing blue. It'll go, you can go over that. So, don't worry about it being... Um, having these green splots, especially if you plan on cutting stuff out, you know. And in this case, this page that I did, there was green splots all over the background. I just painted over them. The black backgrounds painted over a lot of green splots. So, you're the boss of your color book. <laughs> um, well, I can tell you that the the Dilutions journals are nice, heavyweight paper. They'll hold up to a lot of abuse. If I was going to recommend one book, like if nobody, if you'd never had an art journal before and you want to do mixed media with paint and water and collage and all kinds of stuff, I'd recommend the Dilutions journal. Now, I've already, <laughs> I've painted all my Dilutions, so I can't show you the original cover. I have three of them, but I've done faux leather on all three of them. But the colors are the, the manila color. You know, they're just, um, they're like that, the color of a manila envelope, that yellowy color. But that's what I would recommend is one of these. If you're just going to want to do tons of just play and color, draw, if you want to draw, and, you know, a, a lot of different things, I like the 
Let's see if I have one that's not a painted cover. The blue, um, here, no, that one's painted over too. I'm trying to find them. It's the XL. I think I've painted over every cover. I don't have a fresh one. The Canson Mix Media the, has a blue cover, has XL on it. That's what I would recommend for just, you know, general art journaling. <clears throat> oh, you're welcome, Carrie Ann. All right, so, but the, the dilutions have heavier paper and take, can take a lot of abuse, can take a lot of water, glue, and all that. But there's tons of books out there. You know, there's so many. We all know that, right? <laughs> oh, I just don't like the spirals in the can. Yeah, and, and the, the, that's true. The XL cans and mixed media are spiral bound. But you know me, I, this is what I do with all those. I take the spiral out and put in my own book ring. So all my all my cans and mixed medias are de-spiraled. I take the spiral out of them and just put in book rings. <clears throat> so yeah. All right. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I'm I'm liking it. You know. I mean, there's some. I could get in there with a little bit of a few more darker areas, but. I'll do a little bit here in the in the yellow with some maybe uh, ochre, yellow ochre. But yeah, you know, look, you know, it looks pretty and it didn't take forever. Again, it depends on what you want to do. If you're wanting to practice your shading, your blending, you could do 20 colors on this one flower. If you're just going to cut it out and it's just going to be a part of a bigger art journal page, you may just not want to spend all that time. Let's see. Let's just get a. Here's a yellow. Okay. See, I'm not getting in there and coloring every single little, little petal. Okay, you can. All right. So I just want that. It's a little bit of shading. Could go in there with a few, a little bit of white, just to pop out a few of them. <clears throat> um, I bought a cheap sketchbook and I haven't done anything with it. Well, the problem with the cheap sketchbooks, they're like they're for sketching, they're for drawing, they're for you know, you're gonna if you're not used to a, working with a thin page with wet medium, whether it's you know, watercolor, a lot of matte medium, because I put a lot of coats of paint of matte medium and it thickens up the page. But, you know, you are you are kind of fighting the thinness of the page. I don't glue any pages together, even in a composition book, the, in magazines, nothing. Any kind of book I wear, I don't glue any pages together. Personally, I don't like the way they, I don't like the glue together not that I don't mind wrinkles, but I personally don't like the feel of a two pages glued together. I just, that's me. You know, a lot of people want to glue five pages together. That's great. Whatever works for you. But if you're just starting out, <clears throat> take a sip of coffee, guys. Doing mixed media with a lot of painting, gluing, pencil, and, you know, a mixed, you know, everything. If you have a thin composition book size or a thin sketchbook page, you're going to be, it's going to wrinkle. It's got, you're going to be fighting the thinness. And if you're not used to doing that, it's going to kind of probably, oh, this is no fun. You got to make a book that, you got to have to have a book that's fun. Yeah. My recommendation, if you don't have a decent size um, sketchbook that has a, a, a good weight, is cardstock. Buy a pack of Staples cardstock. 110 weight cardstock and do individual pages. That's what my recommendation would be for a couple reasons. One, you're working with a heavy duty paper that's not expensive. And two, they're individual pages. So if you mess something up, you're not going to feel like you've ruined your whole book. 
okay? You can always take your pages, 110 weight card stock from Staples. I think you can get like, I don't know how many come in it, uh, 100 come in with 110 weight. Anyway, you can get, a, you know, a, a ream of um, 110 weight card stock for like 10, 12, maybe $14. I haven't priced it lately because I'm stocked up, so I haven't bought any for a while. But you can turn that into a journal if you, you can either punch your own holes and put them in a three ring binder. You can punch the holes and put the book rings or you can put them in individual pay, pocket protectors and make your own if you don't want to punch holes in your nice finished mixed media page. So you can make your own journal with just cardstock. I would recommend that over thin paper for mixed media and cutting things out and gluing it down. You know, this this is going to be thicker than some sketch paper. If I cut this out and glue it on, a, you know, something really thin, and it's just easier. You'll have more, you'll be happier with the results if you use a little thicker paper. But try it all. You know, try it all. Okay, so there we go. And again, I'm going to, I didn't, wasn't careful about going out the edges because I'm going to cut this out. I'm not going to use these leaves. I'm just not even going to worry about it. Okay, so let's go down here to the pink one. Again, I'm just going to pick a nice hot pink. Let's see. That's kind of... I think I'll use a magenta. I think I've got my magenta over here because I was using it on Crimson Lake. No, I don't want Crimson Lake. I want uh, what is it called? <clears throat> Mahogany. Mahogany red and a nice bright pink. We'll go with that. And there's the purple. Okay. <clears throat> and again, guys, you know, there's no really rules about it. It's just that after you do it, certain things for a long time, you just see what works better. But it's not like it's a rule, you know. I mean, I've got my share of composition books that are slap full of everything. Glue books, paint in them. But you are fighting the wrinkles of, of it. Wrinkles don't bother me in a, in a book. But a lot of people, they can't stand that their pages get wrinkled with matte medium glue and all that, right? So, these are color book pages out of the inspired nature. I'm kind of going showing how you can use your color book pages for other things than just having them sit in a color book. Not that there's anything wrong with that. You know, I got this page, double page in here. I've got these two separate pages in here. This one I drew my own animal, my own little emu, added collage, paint, different you know different things here on this page it's a black acrylic paint background collage this is i painted my own waves here so you can do other things in your color book too and then you can always just cut this out and use it for you know put it in your collection of favorite color book pages don't care about the back <laughs> you know i don't um now you want it might want to look at the back and see if it's something you would want to keep you know if you plan on cutting something out Otherwise, you know, like on the uh, the look fashion book, like I knew I wanted to cut her out, but I don't want to, I don't want to cut my look fashion color book up, you know. So I made a copy of her on cardstock and cut, cut her, colored her, and now I can cut her out and use her on a journal page. So, and Colleen, you have 39 calendars to get crack a lacking on. Hey, Debbie. <laughs> I did, Colleen uh, re-showed her, uh, I, I didn't get to see her color book, I mean uh, her calendar haul. So Colleen, if you want to put a link in there to that video, Colleen, everybody would love to see that, I know. I, I enjoyed every, it's not that long, 20, 30 minutes at the most, maybe not even that long, where she showed all 39 calendars that she bought to, to cut up. <laughs> That was awesome, Colleen. There's a couple in there. I was, I was saying, I'm jonesing for that one, Colleen. I might need to, you to send me a page out of that one. <laughs> there was a couple of good ones in there that I had not seen. Or not seen anything like them, you know. So, anyway. 
yeah. So Colleen showed, uh, she she redid the video so that I could see them. So I appreciate that, Miss Colleen. I enjoyed it, every minute of it. <laughs> yeah, Carrie, you asked her to do it, did it over? I don't know. Well, whoever did, I appreciate it. Because I, I was happy to see all those calendars. All right, so again, you know, there's like, let me show you on this one. See all the black lines, the little color book lines? It shows you, you know, essentially where to shade. You don't have to follow it exactly, or you can always add your other, more. I'm just kind of doing it as simple as I can right now, right? I'm just doing this very simple coloring just to show you how you can use it. You can take as much time as you want. Uh, no, that was fun, Colleen, to watch you. That was fun to call. All right, so on this one, now here's what I would probably do just in my for myself. This one has a whole bunch of like dotted stamen type things. I might get in there with a little bit of uh, white, you know, to kind of bring out some of that. But personally, I think I would be hitting this with my Posca pen and doing a whole bunch of little white dots like making those pop out because you just really can't get these nice highlighted whites without well a posca pen is just easier than using a, a brush and a tiny brush and um, a white acrylic paint but you could do surely do that too you see what i'm talking about see how you can pop out certain areas you know just here and there with the posca dotted dotting it same thing like you could do this with stars So, something like that for the center. All right, so now I'm going to go in here with the pink and right next to the magenta or the, what is it called, mahogany red. I'm going to just go over the mahogany and a little bit into the lighter color. Now, you might want to do the white first so you don't lose where you've done your base coat with the kids' watercolor. You want might don't want to lose where you can go with the bright white. Once you've got that colored with colored pencil, you're not going to get that vibrant white back. Okay, like I showed you up here, trying to go over a, a color with white or just going on a wash. See the difference? So if you want to keep those whites popping, you want to keep them first before you start doing a lot of shading and a lot of blending. Okay, now I'm going to go back in there with the pink over the top of the magenta and just kind of blending. And again, you can spend as much or as little time as you want doing this step. You know, all the blending, it's great practice, but you know, you're, I'm hurrying. I, I mean, I, I, I'm just, I'm going to be the first to say I'm rushing through this. You don't have to rush. You want to, like, especially if you're getting color books to relax and enjoy, you know, you don't want to speed through it. But I'm trying to squeeze in as much information as I can in a stream. So I'm, you know, I go faster on a stream than I would in by just sitting here by myself. But I try to show you as many things as I can, even if it is a little... This is my version of a speed speed video right here. <laughs> There's my version of a speed video. Because <laughs> I don't edit anything. If y'all watch my recordings on YouTube, it's straight. I upload them straight from Ustream to YouTube. No editing. No, you know, they're just straight on up there. <laughs> All right, so there we go. So we got a few shades. Again, you can go in there with the white and blend out the pink. But you won't lose those nice bright whites that you put on earlier because it's like your initial coat. And that initial coat of white is going to stay there for you. But now I can do some blending on top. And then, before I start the next one, I'm going to go get a cup of hot coffee. I'm expecting Hubster to call me any time, telling me he got on the plane. He's flying in today. He's been out of town. All right, so there we go. See? And again, you can go in here 
and do more like petal lines like if you want to get in here with some more little individual little petal lines see you can get in there and have some detail it's the same kind of idea when I did the dress in the Sherlock Holmes book where I added my own patterns on her dress it's the same thing here you can add your own extra petal lines see you can add your own stuff it doesn't have to just be you're the boss of your color book <laughs> now I keep saying that but it's true um, hey Dasha <laughs> well, I'm glad you made it Yeah, I like these colors too. So in, uh, all I've used is black, white, a pink, and a magenta. And that's it. Well, and the white Posca pen, the dots. Okay. So I could get back in there with the black. And really, now watch how this is really going to pop. Go back in here in the black. And get in there in the really darkest areas. Let me do a few little areas here so you can see. And you might want to go back and blend some of that out so it's just not a harsh black. But I, I want you to see how that really makes it pop. All right? So look at this side compared to this side. Now, you may not want to leave it that uh, stark of edges. You might want to go back in there with your purple. All right, that's probably Hubster. Let me take that call and go run and get some coffee, guys. He's trying to call me and the call's not going through. Let's try twice. So we'll see if he tries a third time. For some reason, it's not going through. Okay, so back over here, I'm going to get some more shadow in here and then blend it out with the magenta. In other words, I'm going over the black to make it a little more blendy. Okay. Hang on, guys. Let me see if this goes through. Hello? Okay, hang on, guys. I'll be right back. Yeah, I'm streaming. Uh, that's why I was just kind of running around trying to, trying to just be online. That's okay. I told the girls I'd be right back. Okay, I figured you just had bad connection. Can you hear me saying, I can't hear you? Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I've been here. It's just been a few minutes. So, okay. Alright. Alright guys, back. I just want to check in. He's got checked into the airport and was calling me. Alright, so where was I? Alright, let me check chat here. Alright, so back to the um, so I'm gonna add some more black right along the edges here. And then I'll go in with the magenta over the top of the black. So it's not like just a harsh black line. It's kind of blended in. And you can spend a lot more time than I'm rushing through here. Right? To get... 
Okay, froze up. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to go back over with the magenta. Hope y'all can kind of see. I'm kind of zoomed out a little bit so you can see all four things. And I'll just hold it up here in a minute. So, like, for instance, right here. So you can take your magenta and just kind of blend that out so it's not just a harsh black line there. But it's nice and dark in there. And again, I'm going to say it again, this is like a dogwood. It's not this color. I'm not trying in this case to have these be botanically correct colors. I'm coloring them bright colors that I'm going to want to use in my art journal. So, you know, just because you know that it's a rose or a daisy or a dogwood or whatever doesn't mean you have to color it botanically correct. You can color it anything you want to go with where you plan on using it. So, see? And again, I can go in here with some more lines. Well, welcome, Dasha. Um, you need to meet, is, pa, is uh, Pavla, uh, Pavla here? I'm not sure. I don't see her right now. Well, got a lot of guests. Thanks, everybody, for being here for an impromptu color booking session where we're going to use these images in our art journal. So again, it's just another way for you to use your color book pages. Practice your blending, practice your shading, your color combinations, all that. And at the same time, you know, sit in front of the TV and color. <laughs> You know, just like, it's a win-win. A color book is a win-win situation. All right, so we use Dilutions paints, this right here, these Dilution paints here as a wash. I watered it down a little area and uh, watered it down and used it as a wash. And then black, white, and turquoise color pencil uh, and a little bit of yellow. Then this is just some kids' watercolor set. These are like this here, like this, okay? And so you can see, you can do, and I just, I usually just use my, you know, uh, acrylic, I wash the, I water these down for a wash, but I'm showing you can use lots of different things. Like if you have a whole set of Neo colors, then use those. Then you don't have to have, you know, 200 colors of acrylic paint. You can have your 84 colors of Neo Color 2 that last forever. I'm telling you, those Neo Color 2s, they last forever. So that's just a wash of that. And then down here are the Inktense pencils. Again, not on the leaves, just here. That's just a one color of Inktense. And we're going to do the same thing on all of them. So, all right. Now we're going to go here to the orange. Let me put my little paper down here, back on there. Find an orange. Get a couple shades. This is pale vermilion and let's see what other color. And then this one is it says poppy red, but it's really orange. It's, it's kind of like this. Post box red. That looks orange to me. So does this poppy red. It looks orange, dark orange to me. We're going with that. So let me sharpen this one a little bit. A little sharpeners right here in a little thing. All right. And then my white. Let me sharpen that again. Now, even though this has black in there, I'm not going to go in there with black. <clears throat> what I would do on something like that is instead of black, I'd go probably in there with, with the orange colors. I'd go in there with like a terracotta. I'm not sure if that's, yeah, it's terracotta. Okay. Instead of shading dark in there with black, I'd get in there with the terracotta for those real dark, dark areas to make the uh, contrast really nice. Because the black might be a little too harsh for orange but again it's a good way for you to practice see what happens 
Okay, so I'm just going to get in there in some of the darkest, the very darkest areas. Again, I'm rushing through. Don't do that. You don't have to hurry. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm going to take the, I'm going to go ahead and get, pick out some white highlights. Remember, if I put a coat of orange, even light orange, if I put a coat of light orange over the whole thing, I'm not going to get that bright white back. Not the pure white like that. With the wash, you can go over it and get really bright, vibrant white. Okay? But if you have a coat of color pencil on there, you, you can't, it just never comes back as vibrant. So I just want to make sure I don't lose every bit of the, the, high, the brightest bright highlights that I want to keep. Okay? So I'm going in here. Again, this is just the wash. So there's no pencil right there. That's orange right there. That is just the neo color. So I'm able to go in there with the pencil and keep those nice vibrant white highlights. And it could be yellow or whatever if you want to highlight it. I'm just doing it just so it really shows here. Okay, so now you can see the very bright white highlights before I start blending. All right, so now I'm going to go in there with the dark orange. And I'm going to go over the terracotta and start blending. And you can just go back and forth with your pencils, you know, in a different areas. Right now, I just want to concentrate on going over the terracotta areas and then pulling it out maybe in a little, little further. I'm not worried about going out of the lines because these are all going to be cut out. Hey, Jeannie. I saw you earlier. Maybe you were just a... Uh, AFK and then some of these little edges here I'm just gonna kind of get a little bit of the shadow and I'll hold it up here in just a minute so I hope this is helpful my mom says it is she tells me what's what she gets out of the color book sessions she says, oh that was really helpful that tip right there I said, okay, thanks for letting me know, Mom. She might be here. Mom doesn't sign in, but she watches occasionally. Otherwise, she'll just watch the recordings. Okay, let's see. A little bit right in here. All right, so there's that stage with a little bit of the darker orange on top of the terracotta. Let's pick up a couple more of these little edges there. Thanks for coming in, Terry. Thanks for being here live. You need to email me your address to be put on the art cards. I try to send everybody that visits an art card eventually. I can't promise you when because I have to make them, you know. I make them a batch at a time. <laughs> so they're usually gone by the time I, you know, the people are on the list. But if you want to send me your address, I'll put you on the, on the uh, art card list. All right, so now I'm going to take the light orange and do the same thing on top of the dark orange and pull it up, right? Now, again, I don't want to lose every bit of that white. I'm going to kind of be a little cautious on this last um, color that I'm using. And again, you could do this with 10 colors. You could make these look so realistic, you know, find you a, a, a picture of a real rose, not an orange rose, you know, pink, yellow, white, red, whatever. Again, I'm just using these colors because I'm going to, I want them to be nice, vibrant, bright colors in my art journal, whether they're realistic or not. But you can, you know, find you a, a picture of a real rose and color it like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> you know, take your time and color every little 
every little petal very realistically. Again, I'm going off the edge because I'm cutting this out, so I don't really care about staying in the lines. All right, so I'm just going to go around and start kind of blending in. And then I can go back in with the white and go on top of the white and the light orange and blend it even more. So it just depends on how much time you want to take for every little petal. So if you have any questions, put them in caps. I don't think you probably will have many questions because I over-explain everything. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm usually, I usually have a very light touch. Now, when, I, when you saw me go in here with the white, I did put a little bit more pressure because I wanted it to show up quickly for you. But I'm, I'm very light-handed when I'm coloring without a demo. Okay, I'm very light-handed. Now, now I'm again real light-handed and just kind of blending out everything together. I'm kind of blending everything together with the white, but I'm very, very light-handed with especially portraits. When you see me do skin like I did the, uh, let me, I don't know if y'all saw the, there, I know I posted the picture, but here's the completed picture of uh, Cinnamon Cooney, and it's flashed out, guys because I have it on bright so that you can see this but let's see if I can get it there oh well it's a little because you can't see this all the skin but I spent another hour or an hour and a half finishing that up after the show but it flashes out but it's a light touch hey Kathy So now I'm just kind of blending it all in. A little bit. And then I'll just add a little bit of some kind of a yellow here in the middle. And again, I can go in here with the Posca. Or you can just do it with a white acrylic paint on the back end of a brush to make little dots. Make those kind of pop out. Add a few of my own just to make it look a little bit more. Okay, so there's the orange one. Again, you can sit here and blend out every little pencil mark. But it does take a little bit more time to do that. you got to take your time. I'm rushing. <laughs> um, Terry says, hi, she's stuck at the accountant's. Hey, Terry, at the accountants. <laughs> uh, tweeted a picture. I don't care watching live on New Street. If, if I'm not following you on Twitter, I will when I see it after the show. Um, I'm pushing down a little harder now. Uh, like, for instance, to quickly get a dark, that dark terracotta, I pushed a little harder than, say, I normally would if I was just sitting there coloring. Same thing for the white. But normally, I, I, I'm doing this. Okay, now, now just watch. It'll eventually get... <laughs> I'm just going to keep doing this for a second. I hope you can... Well, let me hold it up. Okay. Now here's why you can bear down real hard and quick. And again, I, I'll try to explain it as simply as I can. You can do this if you want. If you know you're going to want that or that terracotta this dark, you can go ahead and bear down right now and color that in real dark, which I did more on show than I would normally do by myself. The problem with doing that. I'm getting my teacher voice. Where's Jean? The problem with doing that, once you do this, there's no more blending. That's it. If you know that's all you want to do right there, that's fine. But there's no more blending with that. You can't blend. Once you've coated it down that much, that's your 30 layers right there. Okay? If you want to blend things, this is how you have to do it. Then you can go in there with your orange. You can go in there with some white. 
You can go back with the terracotta. You can go in there with another shade of orange. Go back with the white. Go cross hatch it this way. This takes lots of layers. That you can do that real quick. You can do that real quick with one swoop, but there's no blending with that. There's not, that's it right there. So if you want to have lots of pretty shaded layers like this, it's very light handed. It's this. This is what I'm doing with every layer you're seeing right now is that. Okay. You can't get this by doing that. Okay? So I hope that helped. So yes, you can do that. And I did it a little bit here in the in, on this color book. I mean on this image. But it's not this. <laughs> so again, it depends on how much you want to practice your shading, your blending. You know? lots of you know five or six colors right here and getting them very um, in a lot of depth to the pedal or do you just want a flat pedal it's totally up to how much time you want to spend okay this is how I work on portraits like that I'll do this in a color book especially if I know I'm just going to want to color cut it out and put it in an art journal I do not spend as much time in a color book as I do my um, drawings of animals, portraits, flowers, or anything like that. A, a true drawing. I spend much, I spend, I do this <laughs> when I'm doing my own drawings. I'll do some of this on a color book page, and I'll even do more of this kind of thing if I'm doing a quick demo. Okay, this one, I'm getting ready to come down here. This one is the ink tints, okay? So here's the different ones we started with. This started with the Dilutions wash. This started with the Kids Watercolor wash. This started with the Neo Color 2. And this started with the ink tints wash. So what I was trying to show you, you can start with the wash of any of it. Except don't use something shiny. Don't use a glossy paint. Okay? All right. So here, we're getting ready to do the ink tints now, Terry. Yeah. All right? But it's it's all the same. Everything you see me do here, I'm using Prisma Colors on top. Prisma Colors on top. Now, if you have your ink tints and you want to shade this with your ink tints, you can do that just like you would your color pencils. I prefer the Prismacolor pencils just because they're soft and blendable. Because you can do that. <laughs> you can do this with, you know, a lot of color pencils. Well, maybe not quite that uh, dark intensity. But, um, yeah, I like the softness of the Prismacolors regardless of the, you know, breakage issues that we all talk about behind their back. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, all right. Yeah, so now we're going to go on here with the ink tints, but I'm going to use color I'm going to use Prisma colors on top of it. Again, the dark green that you see here guys, that was on the pages. These pages come with splots and bits of colored green. But the main reason I bought this color book was to cut things out. All right, so now let's go on with the green. I want to get a, a nice dark. Let's see, do I want an olive green? Maybe an olive green. I got a new one here. No, that's dark green. I want my olive green. Here we go. This is an olive green. Actually, it's called green ochre, but it's an olivey green. I have a couple shades of olive. We'll go with, uh, well, maybe that might be too dark to show up on camera. Let's see green gray let's go with because I want it to show up so let's go with um, what is that called spring green and then we'll go that might be too olivey I want it to show up so let's 
Yeah, let's go with the dark green. So dark green, spring green, and again, I'm going to go with black and white. Okay, we're just going to use those four for this one. It does help a lot. Okay, good. Thanks, guys. I try to explain it as much as I can. I know sometimes it's to the point of over-explaining, but I'd rather over-explain than not have it explained enough. That's just me. That's just the way I roll. Don't email me. Don't leave me a thumbs down. <laughs> actually, I don't get, you know, it's really funny. I really, I actually never look at the thumbs down. I never look. I never look at the thumbs up or down. It, it's just, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I probably have more thumbs down than I know, but I just don't look at them. So anyway, all right. So I'm going to start with the dark green. Um, I could start in here with the black in just a couple of areas. But remember, if you put black down, it's very easy to pick that black back up when you use a light color. So that's just my, my recommendation would be to do the black at the end, you know, toward the end when you just want to do a, like a, a layer or two. Or be very careful. All right, so now I'm going to go with the dark green. And all these areas, all these areas that have the little lines already shadowed for you. And I'm kind of going to, I'm doing it a little bit lighter this time and a little bit on the side. Okay, because I know I want to add more green blending in there. So let me try to hold it up just a little so you can kind of see. You know, yeah, I just don't, I don't know. I just, I, I do my videos because I like to encourage people. I like to inspire people. And if someone doesn't like it, you know, that's okay. I mean, I never leave thumbs down on anybody because to me it's like, you know, if you don't like the video, if you don't like long videos, there's plenty of short ones out there. Just move on. Just move along. You know what I mean, Vern? You know, <laughs> so anyway, uh, that's just, that's just me. You know, I realize that long videos are not for everybody. I personally like long videos because I like to watch things while I'm working. So I look purposely look for uh, videos that are an hour or more. You know, there's not a whole lot that are more than an hour except streamers that upload. But I do look for those because I enjoy having them, you know, it's kind of like company in the background while you're working. So I'll look for uh, long videos to watch. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm kind of I'm just doing this on the on the already grayed areas, the areas that are already got the shadow lines for you. I'm just kind of going over all those, and I'm kind of it's kind of jerky because I'm holding it up in the air with no pressure, much pressure behind it. So, but again, you know, if you like the long videos but don't have three hours of time, break it up into segments you'll watch the I'll do that with like for instance Paula if I can't watch all three hours of Paula's show in on you know the next morning I'll watch an hour and a half then I'll come back and watch the hour and a half later in the day or whatever you know you don't have to watch them all at the same time you can watch you know just scrub up to the area you left yeah Gina likes to spin or knit while watch yeah see that's you know that's just uh, that's just uh I like long videos, but I understand not everybody does. Personally, I don't like speeded up videos. I don't, I, the, here's the reason why I don't like speed it up. And I've heard a few others say too, because they really don't get a sense of how long something takes. I like the slow process. I like seeing every little pencil stroke, every little nuance of a project that's just me i know not everybody likes that i know not everybody has the time for that but when something's speeded up at least that here's my thing at least if you're going to do a speeded up video tell everybody how long it took you like if you're going to do a drawing a portrait and then you do it in five or ten minutes at least tell everybody in the description box especially if you don't do a voiceover at least tell everyone in this description box, this took me six hours. It didn't take me 15 minutes. It took me six hours. Because when it's speeded up, you really have no idea how long it took a person to do it, right? <laughs> so that's just me. All right, now I'm going to take the lime green. No, let me take the white because I don't want to lose every bit of these bright, the, the bright areas that just have the ink tints on them. 
And all of these pretty much work the same way as far as a wash underneath. You can go over all of them with your color pencil. Okay. Dee, did you get a chance to watch your Disasters Hot Mess Journal page from... No, because you don't have it on YouTube yet, Jean. The last one... The last one I watched was the one that you posted on YouTube before Till's singing video. That's the last... It was a two-parter. I did what... Now, I was there for the first 30 minutes. Is that the one you're talking about? I did see that one then, because that's the one before Till. No, oh, let me hold this up a little. So, is that the one, Jean? Then I did watch it. Oh, wait, my thing's not scrolling. Hang on, guys. Um, how did I do that before I leave? Yes. Yes, do that before you leave, Jean. Upload those two parts to YouTube, please. <laughs> Not that I can't go to your YouTube. It's easier, though, to watch on YouTube. There's no commercials. You know, I mean, you get the one. If you, you know, do AdSense or whatever, you'll have one. Or, you know, some people have maybe two. But it's not the same as Ustream, you know, where the ads interrupt. Which, you know, hey, I don't, I'm, that's okay. Don't. I'm not going to complain about you stream. So I'm just going in there. But it is easier to watch the recording gene on YouTube. If I have to watch a recording, if I have to watch a recording, I'm going to watch the recording on YouTube. The benefit of doing you stream here is live chat. That's the benefit of here, you know, live chat. Yeah, upload it, Jean. I'll, I'll make sure and catch up. Or either that or I didn't watch, did I watch just part two? Maybe I just watched part two, the one that turned out. The stars? All right, I watched, all right, I must not have watched the first part then, Jean. I watched the second part where, the, where you did the stars, your stencil stars, that you did your own stencil. The one that turned out. I watched the one that turned out. I didn't watch the disaster. I guess I gotta go back and watch your disaster, Jean. <laughs> okay, guys, so here we go. There's some, and again, you could spend more time in here, you know, more time in getting more depth with darker. Let me hold that up. Getting some darker depth, but I would recommend if you go in here with this black, like I'm doing here. Go back over with the dark green to blend it out a little. So it doesn't look like just a harsh little triangle. I mean, there's a place for that too. But in flowers or something like that, you probably want to blend it out so it's not so harsh. Okay. Hey, Iffy. Do you guys really bother with... Yeah, I don't just sew anything. Now, uh, gee, uh, yeah, I understand, Jean. You just it over because you didn't like it. Uh, and for me, if I didn't like something, I'd just paint over it with just, you know, just acrylic paint. I'm just not a gesso gal. If I'm going to base coat something with a, an acrylic, I'll just use acrylic paint. But there is places for gesso. I'm telling you, Paul is a, the master of using gesso under her journal pages where um, as a, almost like a resist because when you have the gesso on there and then you put another paint and you put a stencil you can rub away the paint because of the gesso I kind of do the same thing rubbing paint away if needed because of matte medium I'll use my you know golden matte medium to to glue things down which gives it a coat of kind of like a resist so that if I get paint acrylic paint on the top you know when you see me do my art cards it kind of has that effect of a resist but Paula has taken it to a, a whole level of uh, of using gesso to use it truly as a resist when she puts stencils and paint and does a rubbing away technique yeah 
So, yeah, if you want to see good gesso use, watch our journal artista. She's 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 got a handle on that gesso. <laughs> know what I mean, Vern? Oh. <laughs> hey, Marie. <laughs> Okay, so again, take as much time as you want to get in here, blend all this out. You know, I'm again, I'm I am really hurrying here, guys, because I want to get as much as I can into the show. Okay, but see how that black makes it really contrast. But again, if you don't want it to look too harsh, then go back in there with the like the dark green and blend out, blend out that dark black into the petals or, or leaves or whatever you're doing. It just makes it look more natural, more realistic if you blend all that out. Okay? Again, this is not supposed to be botanically correct colors. <laughs> Let's clarify that one again. Alright, sip of coffee. <laughs> So now we've done these four flowers. This one has a Dilutions Paint Wash base. This one has the Kids Watercolor base. This one has the Neo Color 2 base. And this, this one has the Inktense Wash base. And then all of them have Prismacolor color pencil shading on top. Now we're going to cut them out. I thought they were perforated. Yeah, I can kind of, sort of perforate. It doesn't, I don't know if it's actually got a perforated line or what, but they tear out pretty well. And that was actually the reason I bought this nature book, because, let me do a quick flip. You can see it's got all kinds of things that are good for cutting out. Some pages are more gardeny looking, but look how awesome that would be. Maybe we need to color it. Let's see what's on the back. See, like this, I don't mind cutting this up. If I wanted this flower, I have this one, so I wouldn't mind cutting out this dragonfly and losing this. But if you don't want to lose one of the images on the back side, just make you a copy of it, and you're going to just use it in your own art journal. So you can see all the different types of things that are in this book that are awesome for cutting out. Right? Little birds. Any of this is it'd be you know fun to cut out and use in your art journal. So don't feel like you can't, you know, you're the boss of your color book. If you want to cut it up or copy it or color it and tear it up or whatever you want to do. <laughs> Look at all that, see? <clears throat> Leaves. And then this one just had a tree on it. Did our own background, painted our own water. We put our own bird in this one. We put a bird on it. A little bit of collage, acrylic paint. So you can see the awesomeness of a color book doesn't have to just stay in the color book. Doesn't have to just stay in the color book. I would recommend coloring it either in the book or on top of, you know, if you tore it out and put it on, you know, some cushioned paper or something. Bef I would recommend coloring before you glued it into your mixed media journal because if you've got a lot of collage and bulkiness, especially if you're going page to page to page, back and forth in all different sections, then you're probably going to want to, let me back out now that we're done with that. Okay, let me re-auto-focus. Where's my... Your weird page. This is my focus page. I'm kind of brightening up just a little. Yeah, we lost it again. Maybe if I move back, move in. What camera? My camera and most cameras do not like white, so it flashes it out. But okay, so that's the nature book. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to take these two, get me my little cutter bee scissors. I always like these because they're Teflon and glue or whatever, just it doesn't, you know, same kind of thing with the Timmy scissors. 
They're good Teflon coated scissors. All right, so let me just go ahead and separate them out. Again, I'm not using their leaves. And again, 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 once again, <laughs> I wasn't concerned about going out of the lines when I did the wash because I'm going to cut all that off, right? So I can sit here and kind of watch chat if this is boring to you fast forward it that's you know that's the beauty of a recording you can fast forward but then you're going to miss us talking bad about you no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we don't do that here we're good we're good except for sandy we're good girls <laughs> gotta pick on our sandy every now and then <laughs> oh my goodness but it is, it is a fun group over here. And there's probably about, I guess, maybe about 20 of us that stream. What do you think, Carrie? Hey, Sherry. And, and then like Sherry, she doesn't stream, but she does YouTube. Um, so there's probably about 20 streamers and then probably that many more that do YouTube videos that are over here. And we all go to each other's shows. We all travel around visiting all the different YouTubers and you streamers. So, thanks everybody for watching here and there. <clears throat> yeah, Carrie has a, a, a list of, and again, you go to I carry I K E R R I L O V E I carry love dot blogspot dot com. She has a list, but a lot of people in the streamers do not have set times, so it's you you can't you'll have to like follow those people so that you'll get notifications when they stream because the bulk of the streamers don't have set times, so just F Y I. A lot of uh, impromptu streamers. Well, I, that's what I, I just paint over them, Terry. The screen splotches. It's totally, t trust me, it's totally worth it for this book. Just to ignore the green splotches or paint over them. Like that right there, you can paint over that or color over them with a color pencil. You know? And it's not as many as you think. A lot of splotches, but there's not as much um, green on things as you would think. It's totally worth it to me. I mean, the book, I got it on sale, $7.97, and I think it was even cheaper than that. I think I got this one at, could have been Books a Million, no, Barnes & Noble, I think. I think I got it at Barnes & Noble. Probably on sale for like $5 or something. It's totally worth $5 for all that to cut out. All right, so there we go. We got one little flower. This one was the Dilutions base paint. This one is the Neo Color base. <clears throat> you see it all the time at Barnes and Noble. Get it, Terry! Pick her up! <laughs> yeah, this uh, inspired coloring. There's a, a, a lot of different ones and they all have, I think some of them have a blue splotch. Anyway, they all have that, but I just really ignore it to tell you the truth I just paint over it ignore it so I know. I, I, it's it's just fun to watch. Every, I mean, I, we, I've been streaming for over five years, five and a half maybe, and uploading those streams to YouTube for about a year and a half. So, thank you, Jean. Actually, Jean and Rach01, what is it, 0113, Rach? Those two are the ones that talked me into doing it. It only took them five years, no, four at the time, I guess. It took them four years to talk me into it, but then I started uploading to YouTube, and yeah, I'm glad I did. I met so many more people over there, too. 
and I'm not going to worry about these little bit of stamens or whatever that is. If I want more in there, I'll just go back in there with like a my Posca pen and add some more. I'm not afraid to cut something off like an antenna on a butterfly. I'll just cut them off and redraw them when I paint the when I put it in my art journal. Or you can use your butterfly wings on like the girl, you know, if you're doing collage. Now, I don't do a lot of collage with the girls, you know, like magazine girls. But you can so use those for the wings on the girls and stuff like that. Color them whatever color you want. Aw, thanks, Tracy. Appreciate that. And I do try to answer all the comments over there. You know, when people ask me questions or whatever. I do my best because I try to answer all the questions here. Overly so sometimes. <laughs> hey, Juanita. Good to see you. Did you get your birthday card, Juanita? Juanita's birthday card was a couple weeks ago. A oh, birthday card. Her birthday was a couple weeks ago. Three maybe now? I don't remember. Okay, you know, it, Sh Carrie had to leave, so Sherry's going to keep the girls in line. <laughs> uh, it's it's Eileen we have to worry about. Oh, is she here? <laughs> Just kidding. I don't see Eileen. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Di Diamante. Diamante. That's it. I like, I like when they're unusual names. I like trying to say them or give you, you know pet names <laughs> okay Jean are you at your new computer yeah upload those videos before you head out of town Missy <laughs> and I get people asking me all the time because I talk to Carrie Jean Sherry and, and you know when y'all send happy mail everybody says oh does Sherry have a does Sherry have a YouTube? So I always try to link, you know, the people ask about Sherry, Jean. I mean, other people occasionally, but it seems like I get a lot of questions about who's Sherry and who's Jean. And maybe they don't ask as much about Carrie because I'm always talking to Carrie as my mod here. But, um, so make sure if y'all, while you're here with everybody that's here, Put in your links, uh, Sherry and G anybody. Links are open until I leave. When I leave, I turn links off. It's like turn the lights off. <laughs> but uh, y'all are welcome to put your links. If you're, if, even if you're brand new, just walked in the door. You know, I mean, we we can detect spammers after the third third link. So, <laughs> oh Terry, did you lose sound? I mean, anybody else? sound okay maybe she needs to refresh Sherry or, or um, Janet would you mind telling Terry to refresh if she can't hear thank you there's Jeannie Jeannie came to the rescue again I'm not going to keep these leaves I am going to keep that bud but I'm not going to keep these green leaves although I could keep them because they sort of go with the green they're a little off. The green color is a little odd, a, a green, odd green color. I just don't really care for it, so I'm just, I'm just going to cut them out. And then I'll just kind of, I don't know that we'll have time to do a whole page, because I really want to do something else in the fit color, color a bunch of things for the journal rather than actually work in the journal today. But what I'll do is I'll flip through the journal and kind of look for pages where they might go. But they don't have to necessarily go in that journal that I've got them picked out for unless I like decide to glue them, you know, tack them in. What I'll usually do is if I find a, pay, a, a place for my cutouts, whether it's collage or a color book, whatever, I'll just put a little bit of glue stick on the back just to hold it in place until I get to that page. Why am I talking like this? <laughs> 
we cut that out. Thanks for off there. Um, anyway, yeah. Oh, and speaking of sing songs, sometimes you get, you know, talking and it sounds like this. Um, Jean, I love it when Jean sings on her show. She sang a little bit. She just sings a little, you know, just a little, whoops, I don't want that green leaf. She'll just sing a little bit of a sentence or something, you know, a little chorus or a little bit off of a song. But Jean's a music teacher. Jean can carry a tune. Jean has a pretty voice. <laughs> so anytime Jean busts out in a song on her stream, I enjoy that. I enjoy listening to Sassy Pants. Okay, there's a little bit of leaf right there on top there. I'm just, I'll just leave that. Um, anytime Jean busts out in the song, I like it. <laughs> <clears throat> Thanks, Dasha. Yeah. If, you've, if you're on Twitter or follow me on you or message me to follow me on Facebook, because I can't go to the links right now when I'm streaming live. But anytime anybody's here and you want me to follow you on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. Now, i got to say on Facebook, I, I'm kind of slow about that because I don't follow everybody on Facebook. I, I'll go and I'll check out. If you're, if you're on Facebook, you don't need to follow me or me follow you from, to see my artwork. I make it public. All my albums are public. Now, there will be some that are in my friends, uh, that are in my, uh, you know, friends, friends only can see. But I don't follow, if you're on Facebook and you haven't posted since 2008, I'm probably not going to follow you. I mean, I'm just going to be honest. If you're, an, if you're an artist and you're posting, you know, and you do artwork and you're posting artwork, color books, or, you know, anything, anything really, I'll end up following you. But if, if I just don't follow people that don't post that could be not even real people, you know, I mean, I might have seen you here or I might not have, I don't know. So just saying, I'm more careful on Facebook about who I follow than Twitter, or Instagram, Twitter, or Instagram, I'll probably follow, I'll follow pretty much anybody. Okay, so, all right, so there's our four little flowers. And uh, so now I'm going to just quickly get out the journal. And her too, I've already, I took a picture of her to post on Facebook. So I haven't posted it yet. But now that I have uh, taken the picture of her, I'll go ahead and cut her out. I don't really need this lamp or anything. But the reason I put her on, a, on another card here, well, I actually did four of them so that I could color a couple in Cinder Paula, which she should have by now. And then just a couple to cut out and put in my art journal. So I'm going to go ahead and cut her out and see if I can find a home for her in this journal. Okay. I am going to be kind of careful around the shape of her face here. A little bit around the eyelashes. And this is from the Look Fashion Color Book. I'll post a picture of her on Facebook later. So I, like I said, I already took a picture of her before I cut her out. <clears throat> the which one's your favorite color book? I, I mean, I don't know if you, you're talking about the look fashion book. Yeah, you probably have to order it online. I can't. I've never seen it in the stores either. It was sent to me. You know, uh, I don't. I didn't even know it existed. So you probably have to get this one. The oh, let me show you the cover if anybody's asking. You'll probably have to get this one online. Just it's probably on Amazon. The Look and Around the World Fashion Coloring Book by Suwa. So yeah, look on I'm sure it's you can get it on Amazon. Okay, so let me just Hmm. Doesn't matter to me, I guess. Bye, Terry. Is Terry having problems? Oh, she has. Oh, she couldn't hear. She she might need to check her volume on her computer. 
I've done that before. I've had the volume off on my <laughs> on my laptop. And I thought, what's wrong with Ustream? It was my volume. My computer volume. So, yeah. All right. So there we go. She may be, you know, I don't know. We may have to see. You can do anything you want. Your color book. I'm just playing here, just showing you. You can do all kinds of things with what you've cut out. Don't be afraid to cover something up either. Or cut away something. Don't be afraid to do that. You don't have to use the whole flower. And I'm just playing here, guys. I'm just showing you. You know, you can do all kinds of different things. All right. And she may or may not even be with these flowers by the time we get to the book. All right. So let me make a little space here. The book. Where's the book? Oh, okay. And this particular book, I still need to put another coat of varnish. I put a light, light, light coat on this because I wanted to test it first. This one I did because uh, this was not the one that I did on stream. The one I did on stream had all the four colors of oranges and browns. This one I wanted almost chocolate brown. So what I did on this one, and I said it before, is I painted it solid black, like just black, okay, black acrylic paint. And then went over it with the cranberry. Oh, let's see, was it cranberry? Yeah, cranberry wine. And over and just rubbed it in. Rubbed in the cranberry wine. And then after that dried, I put a coat of varnish. I'm going to put another coat of varnish on this one. So this, this one's a little darker chocolatey brown. And again, I haven't done in there or anything. All right, so let me just, let's do a little flip. I know you've seen this journal a gazillion times. But we're going to kind of flip and audition our bits. And then I might color some fairies from the uh, the Just Add Color Fairyland. Might do one or two out of there. What time is it? Okay, we still have an hour. So, um, what's the name of the coloring book that the flowers came out of? That one came out of <coughs> the Inspired Coloring Nature. This one's only like seven ninety seven regular price. And it's always on sale at Barnes & Noble. And I'm sure you can get it on Amazon. And Inspired Coloring has a whole bunch of different things. They have nature. and They have all kinds. I don't remember them right now. But there's a whole bunch of different ones. And they all have bits that have splotches and little bits of color in them. Which, again, that just doesn't bother me. Especially if I'm, I bought this particular book to cut up. Okay, all right, so I'm just going to do a flip here, and I'm going to keep all my flowers and my girl right here so that I can kind of just pick what I might, where they I might want them to go. So again, this one's done, and this book, this book is not varnished pages. The reason this book is not varnished is because I've used other things in it, like water-soluble stuff, neocolors, and things that will smear if I varnish, where the other book that's all varnish pages is just paper and acrylic paint. So I was easily, you know, able to varnish over it because there's nothing was going to move. All right. This book, it, it's got all kinds of mixed media that things can move. So I'm not going to varnish this. But here's an example. This page is not done. But, you know, hey, let's just... Uh, Let's just pick a flower and just see. See, that's just way too bright for this page. I've already muted this one out. Now, this would be a good one to have a bright page, bright something on it. But I've kind of resolved myself that this one's done, even though I can see things that I could do more to. But I'm just showing you here. I'm just going to kind of plop some things in here just to kind of show you that what can be done, you know. All right. Um, I might or might not settle on a page. Let me prop this side up because it's kind of makes it. There we go. I want to keep it as flat as I can. That one's done. These are all these little um, giraffes are from a color book, the Creative Haven 
it's either Creative Haven Nature. That's another one I bought for cutting up. Yeah, I'm going to put my hand right on it. Let me get a few of these out to show you. Where's that one? One moment, please. <clears throat> Looking, looking. Ah, oh, here we go. Let me just pull these four because I know I've used these four, these four in particular ones in here. So I'll show them to you as we where I've used them. So th these um, giraffes came out of Creative Haven Nature Scapes. These you can get at Michaels and Hobby Lobby. Now, if you can, Michaels usually has a bigger selection, but they don't take coupons. Hobby Lobby has less selection, but they'll take a 40% off coupon. Thanks, Juju. So um, these are normally $5.99. Normal, that's just regular price, you know. Um, but if you use a 40% off coupons, you're practically getting them for just a couple of bucks. Hey, Crocker, too. So if you can get them at Hobby Lobby with the coupon, otherwise, still, even $5.99 for, you know, that's a good bit of coloring right there, right? Now, I, I, I specifically bought these Creative Haven ones because they're one-sided, and I, I bought them to cut up and put in my art journal. So, for instance, these giraffes were like this page right here. See how they're, they're, they're looking all on one page and all bunched up together? So what I did is I colored them my own colors, blue and greens, and cut them up and used them in different spots. So I didn't even keep them in the way that they're situated on the page. Turn them, you know, use, use them in whatever way you want. Okay, that's what I did. Then I put in the, the paint, the water, the clouds, and all that. And just use them as like a, a little focal feature. So again, use your color books in more than just leaving them in a color book. Don't be afraid to cut them up. You know, again, I've got a few, like the Look one, the Paris one. There's a few that I won't just go in and cut up. But most of them I don't have a problem Okay, welcome back, Terry. Okay, so look at this one with this green flower. I'm really liking that green flower because it just kind of fits in here. Whether I want to use it there, there, here, kind of liking it there. Okay. So whether I'll use it right here or maybe over here, it's going to depend on when I get back to this page. But I'm liking it here. So what I'll do is I'll just take a little bit of glue stick and just put a little bit right in the middle. Not glue, I'm not gluing it solidly down. I'm just tacking it down. So I'm just going to tack it down right there. That, that should be enough to hold it until I get back to this page. Now whether I use it here, 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 I can, you know, it's not... I can just pick it up, right, and then reuse it. I mean, use it somewhere else. Bye, Terry, other Terry. <laughs> okay, good to see you. Thanks for stopping in. So I'm just going to leave that on that page, all right? Okay, so we got this page again. Too, not the right blue for me. The pink would be good, but again, it's too stark. Not that that can't be toned down. It's just that this page I've already done a little bit more work on as far as blending out everything. But, uh, you know, this would be a good one with the butterfly wings. Okay, I'm just playing every page. I'm just kind of, you know, auditioning it out. This has a clip art. If you all have any questions, just ask. Otherwise, I'm just, you know, just jabbering on here. <laughs> Which we love to do around here, right? <laughs> we love doing that. But I think this one's got enough flowers, so I'll pass on that. Again, this one's kind of blended out and muted, although, you know. 
just play with it. Okay, and here's the other thing. All right, so I've already got this little bit of clip art angel here. Got this bird here. But if I felt like this girl would work right here, I would not feel any, no regrets about just gluing her right over that bird. You have to be willing to do that in your mixed media art journal if you're just doing one of these kind of journals where it's like uh, working on a whole bunch of pages at once. Thanks, Terry. Um, you have to be willing just to cover things up. I really like her here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to keep flipping through the book, but I'm going to put a post-it note here to think about putting her on that page. Then I'm not sure that I like this angel here who has kind of like this time element going around or if I'll end up putting something else there. Maybe, you know, who not the not this particular flower but cuz that doesn't go but you know. So what I'm saying is don't be afraid to cover it up, but I'm not sure I want her here yet. So I'm going to put a post-it note there and keep going. All right. So I just, you know, play with it she kind of gets lost in this one she gets kind of lost oh, but again that doesn't mean that if you really like her here that means you can still paint this out put some more paint there scrape some more paint there and then glue her in you can change your pages right but i liked her on the other one better all right so i still have a pink and orange and a turquoise this one's done this was this these elements were taken out of the Heart Journal Magazine Color Book Edition. And that was the one, let me get my poster here that Hubster made. He made these posters for me. This magazine right here. And uh, now you can't get a free issue now because it was it expired on March 15th. But if you followed me last month and um, saw my interview and Shannon Green's in it, and uh, cage fish is in it anyway they also before the march issue have a color book edition which there it's an e-magazine so you can go buy it's like 4.99 i think an issue and uh, so this was out of the color book issue and i printed it out colored it and incorporated it into my own page do you use no, I don't use alcohol inks. I've used them a little bit uh, when I've done some metal things, like uh, trying to like stain some metal image, you know, little metal bits back, I don't know, years ago. But uh, I don't even know if I have any more. I might have a couple alcohol inks left, but I really don't use them. I guess I just don't feel a need for them. I have so many other inks because, you know, from calligraphy and inking and other things i do have a few i think that up there on the shelf but i don't really use them <clears throat> right now if i use any kind of inks pretty much it's going to be spray inks in a journal or something you know but is there something that you terry is there some reason you asked is there something you wanted to know because if i don't know it somebody here will know I'm trying to price some for the sale oh okay for your uh craft sale yeah it depending on old make sure they're all fresh i mean because they can dry out can't they i would ask somebody here how much they'd pay for them at a craft fair because you got 65 people here you could ask terry <laughs> post to ask them well somebody's going to see that they'll they'll probably answer you and then I just added my own little paint bits and all that. So you can cut this, cut them up and use them in different ways. This one's not done, but this one is like, you know, a good possibility for, see, I like that. I have an angel, a uh, clip art angel here. It's kind of hard to see. I don't know that I'll keep her there, but this almost would be, I'm almost liking these, both these flowers on this page. But my angel is kind of my focal point, but she's kind of, I don't know. I'm not sure if I like her there. Something like this, something like this. If I kept the angel there, she could, this could be this one. could be over here. You see what I mean? So this could be a possibility. So what I'll do is I'll put a post-it note here. Yeah. One of the, somebody here will probably answer. Yeah. 
Okay, so that might be, I might put uh, those there. This one's done. Again, these three little fairies were out of uh, the, out of this book, the Just Add Fairy, uh, Just Add Color Fairy Land book, and I've cut a lot of stuff out of this one. And it is a, it's a double-sided, so you're going to have to lose one side or the other unless you want to make a copy. There's so many repeated imagery in this one that it doesn't bother me to, say, cut her out and lose that. See? So, these are three different girls, fairies, out of the, that book. And then I cut, colored them, cut them out and glued them in here, and then just incorporated paint water, splashes, um, collage, some stamping, some stencil bits, or whatever. Okay. Thanks, Jean. This one has a big um, peacock cut out of the calendar page. I split it down the middle here because I didn't want this. If you want to, I could have made it a little bit closer, but I'll just blend it together with paint. But you, it's better to cut it down the middle where you're going to glue something across the page rather than glue it across the page because the continuous opening and closing will tear that paper. Like if I put her here in the middle, opening and closing, opening and closing, it's gonna, she's going to get a white crease down her eventually. Where paint, even if it starts to crack a little, you can fix that with paint. So, all right, so this, this is also out of, she's also out of that fairy book. But I think this one, again, has enough flowers to her. I mean, this has enough flowers to the page. The orange doesn't work. The pink kind of does. But I think she's got enough with this when I incorporate this into the two-page spread. So I'll, I'll leave that for now. And in the background, this is Dilutions Ink. Again, this is why you can't varnish these pages that you put dilutions on because that will reconstitute. So if I try to varnish this, that's going to move. Um, did you finish the fairy page from last week? The fairy page from last week? No. Um, the la last week I was working on this uh, Sherlock Holmes. I'm not sure what fairy I was working on last week. Trouble, Terry Trouble. Did I cut it out of the book? Or is she still in the book? <laughs> I don't even remember. Last week I was working in the Sherlock Holmes book. Uh, maybe we did. I think we did, Terry. I think we glued her, at least glued her in. We'll probably come to her. When I come to her, I'll remember. <laughs> okay. The Fairy Queen reading the book. Yeah, did we put her in here? We'll we'll see. I work on so many projects in segments, guys, for the show that sometimes I'll forget which image I've used in which book. So yeah, the two page spread. I, yeah, I think it's in here. <laughs> okay, so again, this is partially colored. This is out of the, and I have a, quite a few images in here from the steampunk steampunk design book. And it's also by Creative Haven. These these four that I've pulled are all from Creative Haven. And I've used quite a few things out of this book that I've colored and put in here. So this one's not finished color, being colored, but I am liking the orange, but I'm not liking it with the ocean. Although nothing wrong with some flowers in the ocean. And also, guys, don't feel don't be afraid to cut things up. Like let's just say I wanted to get rid of the steampunk here and make that her her hair okay maybe just keep her goggles and put that as part of her and and it over oh, it didn't fit so I would have to cut some off don't be afraid to cut things down either even if it's a half a thing or whatever don't be afraid whether it's an image of a calendar or a color book that you've colored don't be afraid to cut it down to make it work with your composition You'll hang try to hang thank you Terry <laughs> Okay, so this here's this is the little pirate girl that we've tacked her in on this page. This is out of the tattoo book that Darcy Glam and I got when she was visiting. What is that? Power. The 
ultimate tattoo coloring book. This is a big mama jamba one. That's a big thick one. Got it at Books a Million and it was $16.97. I probably had a coupon and I'm a member of Books a Million and Barnes and Noble, so I automatically get at least a 10%. But you um, you know, they always have coupons for 20% off or buy $25, get $5 off, that sort of thing. So the Ultimate Tattoo Color Book, and this is jam-packed, and it is one-sided as well, so it's good for cutting out. So I'm just going to do a quick flip here. It's all kinds of tattoo imagery. That This is awesome for cutting out and using in your art journals, right? It doesn't have to be a tattoo, right? It can be, these can be wings, uh, you know. Here's where I cut the pirate girl out. So just saying, look, there's an eagle. doesn't even have to have anything to do with a tattoo. There's just so much imagery. Look, Celtic knots. Just so much. And I'm doing a quick flip. I'm flipping like three and four pages are going together. You know, lots of koi fish. Just awesome design work. Hearts, roses, skulls. We, we did a... Uh, we did a sugar skull with glitter for Miss Martha for her birthday present. So you can see there's just tons and tons of things that are cool that you can cut out and use in your journal. Look at all those wings, right? Those are awesome to cut out. Started doing a snake there. Dragons, any of this, any of it can be used. Love that. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That'd be an awesome page to do. Okay, so that one's called The Ultimate Tattoo Coloring Book. And again, I just, this is her out of that book. And she, I've put stickles on her, so she, you can see all the glitter is with stickles. Okay, Terry. Okay. Thanks for being here. <clears throat> So I just have her kind of just stuck on there because I may or may not put her there. Okay, This one we did on a stream. Is this the one y'all are talking about? I don't remember. We did this one a couple weeks ago. We used the butterflies out of, there's a butterfly coloring book. See, now I'm going to end up pulling out all my color books again. How many times have I done that? <laughs> that one... I don't mind showing my color books, though. I do have um, in my Facebook, if you go to my Facebook, in my photos, and in my albums, I have a color book album. And I'm, I'm a little behind on posting some of my uh, color books. But I try to post all my color books and color book pages. Now, I don't necessarily put every art journal page in there like this. But if I do a color book page like her, I'll put her in the color book album. So whether you follow me or not on Facebook, you can steal my albums, my gold rush, my color, my, um, I got some portraits. I, anyway, there's a lot of albums that I have in there that are open to anybody to go look at. But I don't know, necessarily know that I post all my art journal pages in that folder. Coloring butterflies. All right. This one has a page of one colored and one blank. So you could, if you're not sure how to color it botanically, no, not botanically, entomologically correct, <laughs> you've got a, 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 you can color it like a true coloring, true um, colors, or you can just color it yourself. All right. So I bought this one, not for this, but for this. And the book was only like, $5.97 and so I bought it to cut out to cut out the, the parts of this book that are not colored I mean are, that are already colored I didn't in other words I didn't buy it to color I bought it for this side so that I could cut these out and use them um, it was purple yellow and green okay we'll probably get to it so that's where these this this moth this is out of this book on the already colored side, cut out and then incorporated into the page. All right, this one, I still haven't even put any collage stuff on it. I mean, so anything will go on this, right? 
I'm not going to I'm not going to commit these flowers to this page because I don't have anything else going on it. This is Dilutions spray inks that that will reconstitute. So in other words, I can take here and I, that'll that'll move. Okay. See, I don't know if you can see it there, but it's moving. So. All right. Oh, this one. This is the one. Okay. This is the one that they're talking about. And I did go and stickle that and left it open. This is as far as I got. It can still have more stuff done to it. But now I know exactly what page you're talking about, Terry, and the rest of you. <laughs> this is from uh, cut out from the images from that just add color fairyland. And I stickled books and their wings with gold stickle glitter. Okay, there and there. And put her looking like she's riding on the wind with the hand holding her up right there. Yeah. So, no, I did not finish. So, thank you, Terry. Yeah, this is not done. Like, the little flowers, all this is not shaded yet. The flowers are not done. I went ahead and posted a picture of it on Twitter, even though it really was not complete. But I wanted y'all, you know, everybody to see how far we did get with it. It was a purple. I can hear it. So like the little grapes. And again, I don't recommend gluing the images into the book until you're finished coloring because you're going over lumpy, bumpy, mixed media stuff. But again, I try, I, I get, a, you know, a little bit in a hurry to try to show everybody what's going on, you know, how to finish a page, whether I actually get to finish it or not. <clears throat> so like... Let me just kind of bring this up. So like these little berries here. See how I just put some purple on those? So they, they all can be shaded more. More time spent on them. Didn't finish that on the last show. Because, you know, we run out of time. and We're, we're already at 2.18. We have a, like till 2.50 or so. Um, three hour, you know, a little less than three hour segments that you stream. Of course, you just start a new one, but that's all that in that you can do at a time is like a little less than three hours. So I'm just going to do these little berries so you can kind of see. And then, of course, you can go in there and blend them out. But yeah, that's the page. That's the one, Terry. Thank you. So other than, you know, adding some more coloring to the images that we didn't finish really coloring them, like these flowers, all these little flowers were not done. They're just going to base a wash on them. So that does need to be done. But th thank you for pointing out the page. I, I totally did not. This was not even in my mind, Terry or anybody else that asked about, was totally, like, lost this one out of, you know, was out of my head. Okay, so this one, we still haven't finished this one either. We cut out all these little bears, you know, Goldilocks and the, and the three bears. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, this, this is not done either, but this one is out of the Art Deco. Creative Haven again, Art Deco Fashions. These girls are out of there, and I just kind of put them on a black background for now. I don't know what else is going to happen to these girls. Bless their hearts. <laughs> but they're out of this book here. And instead of using magazine images, you can color your own girls and use those in your mixed media collage art journal pages, right? See, look at that. Isn't that awesome? If you're still watching the vid from last week. <laughs> okay, well, that's, hey, that's the way to do it. You just got to do it, do it in segments. I do that with the, a lot of the streams, Terry. I can't, you know, if I'm working on something, I'll sit down and turn on a long video. But I may or may not be able to watch a whole three to, you know, and that's just one part. If we do more than one part, it's six hours. You can't usually watch all of it at one time. You have to break it up. That's what I do. 
also, that's the Art Deco Fashions. Again, Creative Havens. They're like $5.99. That's without a coupon. If you get them at Hobby Lobby, you can use your 40% off. So there's that. This girl is out of the Creative Haven Flower Fashion Fantasies. All the girls in here are dressed in flowers. Okay. So, there's a finished one here on the back, inside back cover. And they're all different. They're all completely dressed in leaves and flower petals and flowers, see? And it's very detailed. Again, this is one, I think I showed how to do that on here. I did a complete wash with a, a pink and then went in there with the darker pink uh, li lining them, you know? You could do that with markers. So, for instance, like this whole thing, you could color her all, let's just say, a pretty green. All right, you could color her all, maybe we'll do that real quick. You can color her all green and then go in there with a marker and just color those leaves, right? So, let me put a, we'll see how much time we have. It's already 11. All right. I just want to do a flip, but these are all awesome to cut out because it's the creative havens are one sided. So I have a kimono one too. Do I pull that one? I need to pull that one down. So, yeah, they're very detailed. I'm a color book enabler, I know, right? And aren't I just horrible? I just have, oh, I actually did buy this book with a, miss, um, a page that didn't print. And again, I could have taken it back and complained and said, you know, look, this didn't print right. Well, I just, you know, I got plenty in here to work with. So, didn't worry about one mis, misprinted page. All right, so that's, that's her. That's her out of that book. Again, you know, you can do all kinds of things, you know. Just to show you, see that's pretty right there. I like that bit of blue right there. That's nice. But again, she's got there's, this page has got a lot. It's kind of almost like I could say complete. So, welcome back, card chick. Hello, Debbie from Andy's. Pat, hey Pat. Anytime I see Andy's, it could be Debbie. Debbie Fernandez. Oh, it's Debbie Fernandez. <laughs> I thought it said Debbie for Andes or Debbie from Andes. It's Debbie Fernandez. Hey, Debbie. Good grief. <laughs> oh, scrolls by quick, guys. Okay, so this is all just collage. There's nothing out of a color book on here. It's collage and paint. Okay, so this is a girl out of the steampunk. Okay. And I kind of liked her, you know, kind of face an angel like this. But, you know, she could probably use something in her hair. You know? Just kind of flip in here. Another steampunk. She's not done yet. Got a little bit more coloring to do on her. Again, I would recommend coloring everything before you glued them in. Okay? Before you glued them in. Because once you start trying to color over lumps and bumps you're gonna it's gonna affect the coloring but you know these are just bits still not even glued down just showing you how they look with different different things This one's done out of the steampunk. And I know I hate to re-explain them all because I think all of y'all have probably heard me explain these a bunch of times. But they're out of the steampunk book. And then all this is collage and paint. So don't be afraid to put paint on top of your coloring. Look, that's all paint. Don't be afraid to color paint on top of your color book pages. <clears throat> Two pink ones, the orange one. So you can just see how you can work with different. I'm just throwing them around out here just so you can see how. Oh, look, looks like eyes. <laughs> it looks like two eyes. <laughs> uh, okay, this would be. 
I, I love this page. Just like it's real hard for me to go back to this page because I love everything about how it looks right now. There's a lot of things that need blending and stuff, but there's just something about the whole. I just like this, just like it is. I may not ever go back to this page. Okay, this one's already got a girl on it. She needs the, this needs the orange one. See, she's holding a flower right there. I do like that on here. It does kind of give it a little oomph. Could almost go, but I, I see I visualize water right here. Water coming across right there. So I didn't. I don't want to. I mean, that could be on the on the bank of the water. Maybe I'm going to tack that down there. We'll tack that down on that page because I do like the orange of that. Even though this is going to be water down here. <laughs> All right. So again, I'm just kind of. Let me see how it plays. This one is pretty much done. I got a little bit more to finish. She's out of steampunk book, and I get cut my own uh, feathers, peacock feathers, to give her extra wings behind the color book bits. This one did a lot of detail. I don't think it needs anything else. Two turquoise, two pink. This is kind of red. But you can see what how you just kind of can play with different. I'm still liking her on that first page that I picked. This one, I think this one's got enough flowers on it. Although that would look pretty as a separate page in itself. But with this page, just in itself, I like it like that. <clears throat> These are the little fish that are cut out of the uh, this one again. The Nature Scapes coloring book. Bye, DeMonte. Thanks for coming in. And uh, the only thing out of the color book are these little fish. This is a flower from a calendar. And then we hand did this castle-y thing here. See, now that's nice. I like it right there. I'm liking that. I'm going to tack that one down right there. Oh, and look, it has an owl on the back. It's meant to be. It's meant to be on that page. This girl, this is a finished page. She's out of the fashion of flower, this book here. Flower fashion fantasy. Let's see, it keeps flashing out. Let me put that book back again, see if I can get it dark. See, that's a real color right there. <laughs> it, it just, you know, I do have it a little bright because I didn't want it to be too dark, but that's the true color right there. But this is what happens. There it goes. All right. Got this pink flower. It's the last one I have left. Oh, look. Almost got now. I don't know. It goes, it goes, but I'm not sure. Let me hold it. I'll hold this page until if I don't find another place for that pink flower, I'll put it there. This one's done. This is a bit of a calendar, peacock, and all the rest, of, except for that watch bit. The rest is all paint. We did this on a stream. This is out of the kimono book, and it's a whole, it's a creative haven, it's a whole book of kimonos. And then the rest is pretty much, not much in here, I don't think. So yeah, so let's go back to, 
Let's go back to this page and just tack that one down here. Just a little bit of glue stick. Like that. Okay, now let me go back to, we're not using anything on this, so I'm going to take my post-it note off of here. And then this is the page where we decided, or I decided I want her. So I'm just going to kind of tack her down until we can work on her. But she'll go right here. Something like that. And I'll paint that out right there. His little beak. Maybe paint that out behind her head right there. But I like that right there. I like that little bit of flower sticking up right there. So I'm going to tack her down there. So that's that'll be her home eventually. <laughs> so, so again, you got to see through this book about the hundredth time, right? <laughs> but yeah, so you can see how you can use your, your girls or any of your color book images in another art journal, right? All right, so let's see. What else do I want? Anything else, guys, that you want to see before I... Oh, yeah, we have... I thought about doing this real quick just to show you. Can we do this in like five minutes? I just wanted to show you how you could also use markers. All right, let's get a book over here so that I'm not completely flashed out. All right, so I'll just hold it up. So what I want to do is... What's the easiest thing? Let's just take... Let's take our green dilutions paint. Let's pop a little on the palette so we don't contaminate it with another color. That's plenty right there. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of water. I'm going to paint her whole dress. Again, I'm really not going to worry about going out of the lines because I'm going to cut her out. So I'll just color the whole thing. I just want to kind of show you how you can use markers too. Now, she does have some skin right under that arm there, so I'll kind of avoid that. All right, so I'm going to paint the whole thing with a wash. Get a little bit more water. We'll see if we can do this real quick just to show you another way to use your color book pages with mixed media. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I liked her on that page, too. There are a little bit of pink, maybe some little pink flowers in there. Um, but you could color them green. You can color them anything you want, just like I do those other flowers. You don't have to just because you know a certain flower is a certain color, you have to color it that color. Make it fit the page you want. Last little bit here. All right, let me put the lid back on because I have knocked these over. They're, they are easy to knock over, aren't they, Jean? Did you, have you spilt some of yours? Jean, I think, transferred all hers into other jars, or she said she was going to. Somebody said that they transferred these into other little jars. But I love these little pots. They're just so cute. I don't want to transfer them into something else. I just have to be careful not to knock them over. All right, so let me hit this with the heat gun. <laughs> Oh, she still spilled it in Maryland. Okay. Oh, almost spilled it. Okay. Oh, she did spill it. You gotta make sure it's dry before you hit it with the, uh, you know, other things, markers, pencil, whatever. Right. Okay, so, and it does wrinkle a little. Again, doesn't matter to me because I'm going to cut it out and glue it in a dart journal. All right, so let me move all these books out of the way. If there's any other color book or anything you want to see, we probably have 10 or 15 minutes. Um, 
in this segment. All right, so let me move this out of the way. Move that out of the way. All right, now what I wanted to show you was, all right, so here's my gel pens and marker thing here that I just keep handy. And these are just the Crayola, let me move all the pens. These are just the kids' Crayola markers, the super tips like this. If you want to use, you know, your Copics or fancier markers or anything, just make sure it's a single-sided page because they will go through. And uh, let me get my cardboard just in case this wants to go through because I haven't torn it out of the book yet. But what I wanted to show you is you can also just use your markers and pencil, right? If you want this to be a little quicker. Let me move this out of the way. i got too many books. Thanks, Iffy. All right, so... If you just want to take and color, let me just color some of the main leaves. And I, I would, again, I'd probably take a little more time doing all this if I wasn't on a stream, but I'm trying to kind of hurry for you guys. I'm sacrificing a page for to rush. Not really. <laughs> I'll use it in my journal. And you can really, you can't really mess it up because you can paint over anything. Okay, so these little ivy leaf things have two sides, so I'm kind of just doing the one side with the marker. Now, as long as this is dry, your marker will go over it, okay? But uh, Jess said that she would not recommend using your Copics over acrylic paint. I don't know that it would hurt it much with just this light wash of acrylic. But, you know, if I spent six, seven, eight bucks on one marker, I don't think I'd take the chance of it anyway. Just use your cheap markers like this. These are just water-based kids' markers. They're not going to blend like Copics or anything like that. But for a color book page, I mean, you know. <laughs> See, I'm just going in there. See how the leaves are? They're like two sides to the leaf, like a light and a dark side. Just kind of going in there on one side of the leaf. Let me do it up here on her shoulder. It'll probably be easier to see. Or up here on these ones in her hat. But it's fun to color a page if you know you're going to use it in your art journal. Sometimes just coloring a page, other than just for relaxing, practicing, blending and all that there's some little uh flowers in there too you know that's all good too but if you feel if you're one of those people that go well, i'm coloring all this stuff and believe me i've heard from people that feel that way i do all that work coloring in a color book and it just sits in the color book you're one of those people that need to cut it out i don't mean cut it out like cut it out i mean like take a scissors and cut it out <laughs> That was so that worked out well, didn't it? Cut it out. <laughs> so, just want to show, give give you the idea here. Okay, let me go. There's, a, there's some flowers in here too, and I'm just kind of concentrating on these leaves just to show you that it can be quicker just to color in some areas. That you're just going to have a solid color like this with a marker. And all these little stems you can do with the marker too. So let me just kind of get a few more here. There's tons of them. I could be here for you know a good 30 minutes just coloring in these little leaves because there's a lot of them. All right, I'll, I'll stop with that. Well, there's a couple back here I'd really like to color in. Let me see. Bye, Jean. Safe trip. I know we'll see you on Twitter when you get on the bus. Jean's never far away. We'll see. She'll tweet us when she's on the bus, when she stops for a rest stop, when she gets to Mom's house. Jean takes us everywhere she goes, trust me. So you can see 
how just coloring in some of those leaves and I just did a few but now let's take a dark green let's see if this is a darker dark green that may not be dark enough what's a dark here we go this is wrong. yeah okay and <laughs> and uh let me see if I can kind of flip this around and hold it up in the air a little. So you see all the vines now? Let's see if they'll get to focus. Like right here, you could probably see some of these. So now I can go in here. And the thing is about the bullet tip is because you can get a fat side, you can get a medium size, and then you can get a thin line too. That's why I like these. So you can get in there. And I'm holding it up in the air. So let's see how well I can do this. But all the little vines, you could go in there with a marker. And it's just a lot quicker. It's a lot quicker than trying to color every single one. See? So you can do that. So you can do play with it with markers too, not just uh, pencil. And the same thing with a gel pen. Let's see here. Let me get a few more of these. Can do it easier when it's sitting on the desk than on the table, rather than me holding it up in midair. So see, let's do a hat here. Crayola has a new set of markers. Do, do they? I don't know. I, they very well may. I don't know. These are these have been around for a long time. They're called Super Crayola Super Tips. And if you can get the set that has some of them have a black barrel, these are scented. These ones are scented, but that's what they look like. Super Tip by Crayola. This is a set of, I think, 50. Now, in Canada, I think you can get a set of 100 colors that apparently some of the girls in Canada said is not available in Amazon US. It's only available Amazon CA. So if you're in Canada, look for the 100 set on Amazon. <clears throat> okay, I use the super tips. I thought I saw some in a clear box. This, this is a drawer. This is one of my drawers. This is two sets here. Actually, it could be two and a half sets. I just throw them all in here together. And uh, but yeah, these are they're all these are all super tips. Now I do have other things over here that I had in the box. Some gel pens, <laughs> some uh, bit crystals. Uh, what else? The sharpie pens not the sharpie markers the sharpie pens they come in all kinds of colors so yeah let's go here with uh let's test this out here so you can go in here with your pens hope that's showing up do some of the vines in another color I don't know if I, if I get too close it's going to flash out or fuzz out so this is just a pen a big a big you know crystal they come in all kinds of colors too so I just wanted to show you that you can use other things besides paint and you can use your markers you can use you know your um gel pens, any of it. Okay, so any questions? Again, I'll tear her out so I because I'll put this book back on the shelf and I'll forget. This is perforated. I didn't per cut it right on the perf, but <laughs> so I can finish her up. Put her in the journal too. Alright, so any other questions on the color books, guys? Just wanted to do a little bit today. Like I said, I'm waiting for Hubster to fly in from Texas. And, uh, yeah. 
Thanks everybody for being here. Everything's fair game in the color books because what is it, Carrie? You're the boss of your color book. <laughs> and don't be afraid to, you know, once you cut them out and put them in the, your art journal, glue other things on there, other images, other little, could be flowers or stickers or anything. It's a mixed media journal. So you can mix it up with anything. Um, looking around, see if there's anything else I missed talking about or showing you guys. Um, not seeing anything. Got some happy mail to get out tomorrow. I gotta get uh, Angie's Angie's book out. Uh, Angie's Angie's place. Angie's place. From um, that we did her a mix, we did her a watercolor. Well, it's a mixed media. It's for mixed media, but it's watercolor paper. Got to get that mailed out. A couple other things I got to get mailed out tomorrow. So hey, Sarah O. So uh, yeah, Barb streams on YouTube at two, which is about an hour and a half. So if y'all need to watch somebody else while you're working, or playing, or just in the background. All right, guys, thanks for being here, and I hope you all enjoyed it and got some inspiration, some ideas, some, some get them up and go. Get her done. <laughs> and I'll see you guys on Monday, and I'm hoping to go to the museum tomorrow. I want to go to the Our High Museum and see Jean-Michel Jean -Michel Basqua. Is that how you say it? Yeah. So I want to see tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow. We'll see how Hubster's been gone all week. So. Okay. He hasn't even left Texas yet. Aircraft is late coming from Atlanta. So he's still sitting in Texas. It'll be a while. <laughs> okay, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Like maybe we'll do, now I don't want to, it's not going to matter if it comes through there as long as it doesn't go on the other sheet. Okay, so we'll try some different things. Uh, Neo colors, ink tints, maybe we'll do the kids watercolor, and then maybe we'll just do one with um, acrylic paint. So we'll do the washes, and then we'll go over each one with color pencil. How about that? that sound good all right so let's and again i'm not going to color them their true botanical colors like i like that's a dogwood i might color it you know hot pink or you know purple i don't know i'm not in other words i'm coloring them specifically to go in my art journal not to make them a botanical painting so all right, so let's just start with this one. We'll start first. We, you know, we always do a lot of acrylic, so, but we'll start with acrylic. You know what? I've been curious about how color pencil will go over the dilutions. Let's go with that, okay? So, now again, I don't want it full strength. I want it to, I want it to be watered down because I want to see the lines. If you can't see the lines, you, you might. it's just going to be a solid... See, I almost knocked that over. I gotta be careful. <laughs> Those little pots. They're cute as a button. Cute as a button. But you don't want to knock them over. All right, let me see. Let me get a sort of medium sized brush here. Oh, this one's probably good. All right, let's go with this. If y'all have any questions, put them in caps. And if you're watching this recording, on YouTube, it's a live show or on Ustream. The uh, link to my Ustream is in the description box. So feel free to come over. I usually stream every Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern. And then at least usually once a week during the week. This week I knew I'd be up at Denise's, my daughter's house. And then uh, hupster has been out of town, so it's been kind of, haven't been able to do one during the week, but here is Friday morning, so I thought I'd do a little bit of color book work this morning. And for the purpose, if you're just joining me, I'm going to color these just whatever color strikes me, and they're going to be. I'm going to cut them out and use them in my art journal. So, so thanks everybody for being here. If I've missed saying good morning to Jeannie, 
Janice. I think I said hi to most people. <clears throat> Hello, Maple Llama. <laughs> and Pat Van. Anybody else I might have missed? Sharipa. I said hi to Julie. I know her last name's not Topaz. Hi, thanks for the in the guests that are here. <coughs> So I think I said hi to everybody else before I hit record. So, all right. So what I want to I'm going to do is I want to see. I haven't tested out the, the the dilutions. This is what the the dilutions paint. I've got five colors. I want to go get the purple, um, and I've got the turquoise, the lime green, post box post box red, the yellow, and the pink. The hot pink so I'm gonna just go ahead and I'm gonna put some out here because I don't want to put water in here right and then I'll just get my brush wet and just kind of make it into a wash just like I would any other acrylic paint but uh, and then just paint this and I, what I want to do is is test it to see souls your you know even your cheap kids let me grab mine over here You know the your cheap kids watercolor set this kind you know this kind of thing you can use this kind of thing as a base and uh, I might use a little bit of each one just to just to play around with each one so um, yes I have a cameo the, I'll tell you the number one tip is to put it on put your paper on the cutting mat <laughs> So anyway, I, I don't know what the problem was with using a double-sided paper, though, Gina. The top layer of the paper tears away from the back. Oh, it's, it's almost like it's a pressed paper, Gina. Like you're saying that it's a double-sided, like one of those papers that's been pressed, a cardstock that's been pressed. Yeah, and it's peeling apart. I've never used one of those, probably for that reason. Um... And most of the time, I use white paper because then I can color it any color I want. But <clears throat> yeah, but I see what she's saying, Val. I think she's saying that when she peels the paper off of the cutting mat, it's tearing the paper apart, and and that's because of that particular paper. Yeah, it's that paper, Gina. It's like a pressed paper. It's like two pieces of paper pressed, glued together. So when you're pulling it apart, you're peeling off. The best thing to do is, I wouldn't use that paper, but, you know, if that's what you want to use, then just, I'd, I'd take your, you know, tool and just be real careful scraping up from the very bottom layer, you know, and working it all the way. Don't pull it, in other words. Don't pull the paper, do the, you know, scrape it up. Yeah, separating the layers of paper. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Don't peel, don't try to peel it up. Try to scrape it up so the paper doesn't peel apart. If that's, if, if I read your few comments correctly. So, my solution is if something's not working, Try something else. That's just me. <laughs> you know, that paper ain't working on. I'm not uh, going to, you know, get all. I'll just find another paper. But that's just me. I'm just saying. Don't email me. I'm not saying Gina would email me. <laughs> and I may have, you know, that's just, if that's what I read from the comments, Gina, I might have missed something. <clears throat> yeah, I just use my, a little metal palette knife. You can get specific tools. You know, and it's basically, essentially, <laughs> the same thing. Just a metal scraping tool, you know, to scrape away. Um, uh, Jess was the one that told me, just use your palette knife. You don't need to buy a special tool. It comes on a machine already torn up. Okay, yeah, I think that, that it might be that paper. It's because those are pressed. It's, it's, it would be like trying to cut two sheets of paper at the same time. You know, know what I mean, Vern? I would just try a different paper. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're going to do, Lindsay. We're going to color these. All right, so let's go ahead and try a few different, do, do it, like maybe these four will do different ones. Like, 
how color pencil goes over this. The reason that I didn't uh, initially buy these paints, well, you know, I said, oh, I've got all those colors in other brands, you know, in my uh, Americana. So I didn't, well, you know what? Here's another thing. I don't need to worry about I'm not going out of lines because I'm going to cut this out. So I can just cut paint right over the edges. Um, <clears throat> is it, for some reason, I got it in my head that they were kind of shiny, that they were satiny or had a sheen, a gloss to them. And usually your color pencils aren't going to go well over the top of a shiny paint. So I just said, well, yeah, I'm not going to get those. I, I can't use them with my color pencil, but they're not shiny. So I bought some when I, I had a coupon for a total, you know, purchase a sale. And and um, so I got a few of, I got five of them to test out. I think there's 10 colors, not maybe in plus black and white. And so I want to, now I'm going to just do these washes on them. And then I'll see what it looks like when I go over with color pencil. Jean takes out because she doesn't <laughs> Uh, well, I thought Jean had to. Go, I thought Jean was going out of town today. Carrie, huh? Okay. For some reason, I thought she was going to go visit, but maybe that's not till later. All right. So now I'm going to take the yellow, and again, you got to be careful with these babies. I already <laughs> bumped one the other day, so now I'm going to clean my brush out, and I'm going to pick up some of the yellow. And I don't need too much, but I'm just taking out the lid there, and then add just a little bit of water to make it a wash. And I'll do the center of that flower. There we go. That's all there is to that. Okay. That's it. That's all I put out. And I even got a little bit more that I probably could scrape into my desk journals. Okay. So there's those. We'll try that. I'm just going to let it sit there. I'll hit, I'll hit everything with the heat gun before I start coloring. But I just want to tell. Oh, so what I wanted to do. This is the dilutions. Now, oh, oh, I've got to make sure. Yeah. I don't want to go through to the other page. Dilutions, paint, wash. Okay. <clears throat> now let's try with just the kids' watercolors. All right. If y'all have any questions, put them in caps. Yes, this is turquoise. I'll tell you the colors I have. This is called Vibrant Turquoise. This one is Bubblegum Pink. And I know the colors are not going to look true on camera. This one's Postbox Red, which to me looks very orange. This looks way oranger than red to me. But I did not see an orange there. So, yeah, I mean, it just looks so orange. But anyway. Uh, fresh Lime. And lemon, lemon zest. Okay. And I want to get the dark purple. They have a dark blue. They have a dark green. Black, white, and I think maybe an orange. But anyway. Yeah. Okay. So now let's go ahead and let's see what color do I want to use. Let's use some hot pinks here on this one. So, just get some uh, spray here and just spray these down for a second. Maybe I'll add a little bit of the bright red too. So, I'm just going to use those colors. I'm just going to put some water in that for, I'll just let it set for a second while I'm thinking about the other two. So, then I'll also use, on one of these, I'll use a neo color. And then on the other one, I'll do some ink tints. Yeah, it looks orange on camera. Yeah, well, it is orange. It, it, it really, the post box red looks looks orange to me too even when I bought it I thought it was orange but I'll look I'll look at them again when I go back maybe this is just a batch that looks more I don't know I like it but it, is, it looks a little orange okay all right so now I think that's set there for a second so let me just take this hot pink color and I'll just put a base of that it's kind of like the it's like a neon and now remember these are just the kids again I'll just go right all over the lines because I'm going to cut these all out, all right? And this paper is a, a little, it's thicker than printer paper. So you have to think of that too when you slap a lot of water on these, okay? <laughs> of course, I'm going to, I don't really care if they wrinkle some because I'm going to cut them out and glue them down, right? I'm going to glue them down on a, 
the art journal so it's really not bothering me if they wrinkle anyway but just be aware of how thin your paper is all right and then i think i'll take the the darker magenta color for the center there we go like that okay all right so this one is the kids watercolor all right so let's move that one over to the side for now and now let's go to the neo colors all right neo color two mama mom bought some of these after she saw mine and uh, i think she just bought a set of 36 or something like that and uh, I said, make sure you get the Neo Color 2 water soluble. The Neo Color 1s are just waxy crayons. So if you want to blend them with your um, water, so I'll show you that this is what this set looks like. To me, this set could still, or well, any set could use more, but it really needs a couple more blues and a couple more reds. There's almost not a good true red in here. I mean, this one is it's as good as post box red, but um, like a deep red without going into purple. So it could use another blue and a red. So next time I think about it or next time I put in an order at Blick, I'll have to uh, get a couple more. So, all right. Hey, hey, Cass, Sandy, behave, Sandy. <laughs> You're the good girl. <laughs> we like to tease our Sandy, S Sandy in UK. Okay, so Dilutions Paint Wash. Okay, the kids' watercolor. Now I'm going to go over here and I just got to decide what color. Let's go with a nice, bright um something do i want orange maybe an orange let's go with the night because i'm trying to have it show up too right now with the oh and i don't want this brush i want a water brush i use my water brush on the neo colors now there's two ways you can do your neo colors you can color right on something now again i'm being kind of messy because i'm going right off the page but you know this will give it a real um a lot of pigment on the page or let me just go ahead and put that on and just kind of scrub it in this is okay morning everybody welcome to coffee and art in the morning i'm Dee. Dee. <laughs> and you're weird i like you <laughs> anyway i thought we would work in some color books not just to call not just color booking um the pages but to for the purpose of cutting them out this was the last one that I remember I have still have a couple other girls to finish that from the um, look color book from this one <clears throat> so I made a couple copies of that book and this is one of them that I'm going to want to cut her out and use her in an art journal page and that's what I thought I would do today I would use the inspired coloring nature for the purpose of cutting this out now I've, I've done other pages in this book and not to cut out just to have just to color them like these two or two separate pages we added our own little stylized emu here added some collage and paint and and made my own turn this into my own kind of tree but these weren't made for cutting out neither was this double page spread so this has got collage watch parts she's collaged in and uh, of course the background is all painted and so this was i didn't do that one to cut out either but there's other images in here like those flowers like these this and see like i probably won't color him i like this little owl not so gr crazy about this little duck so this page and this page of flowers would be good for coloring and cutting out and putting <laughs> i can make you smile Gigi. would be good for coloring and putting in the art journal same thing that's why i like this book that just add fairy landing see i've got all kinds of things cut out and partially used We've used different bits of, uh, of these in the art journal. And so, yeah, but let me do get a page here. Um, you always want to use a piece of cardstock 
behind something that you're going to color even if you're you know if, if you're going to cut it out of course i could just tear it out and uh, it i think these pages are perforated too but just cut it out and do it on the desk but my desk is kind of crunchy with paint scraps and everything so i just as soon color it in the book then tear it out and cut it out so I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'll color these four flowers. Now, I'm not going to try to color them like they're, they're real natural, they're realistic colors. I'm going to color them probably like neon colors and things like that. Because I'm going to put them in my art journal and I'm going to want them really bright um, in this case. Just to be have something different. And I don't necessarily know that I will leave these, light, these green. I think I'll just probably cut the leaves right off not even going to use those so for instance this is a dogwood so it's probably like white with maybe a little pink or yellow in there i'm going to probably just color it another nice bright color uh, i think maybe we'll use we'll try something different like maybe i don't know if i want to use neo colors as a base something you know maybe we'll do a couple with acrylic paint neo color something different just uh or even the ink tints i haven't used the ink tints for uh in the color book so maybe we could do that you can use your watercolor pen 